Howdy, everybody, and oh, unmute my guest there because he was still on mute. Uh, but yes, thanks for joining us all today, Sunday, three o'clock in the afternoon, with a chance for two people from the UK to get together and chat. So time zones aren't as massive a problem for us. Um, the only thing will be just internet connection. I just get <laughs> that's the only thing. Um, but yep, I just had to come over from like a different live stream I was watching uh, it was like Paul Grogan's assembling an insert on his channel and it's just like oh let's watch that for a bit oh yeah I gotta set this one up now so not too bad but all in all a good weekend of trying out some games getting stuff prepared for reviews and probably one of the most well not the best of Christmas dues that I've been to either I guess I should be slightly careful but <laughs> cheers to everybody who has turned up this is another top 10 collaboration list and the idea comes solely from a returning guest who, for some reason, wasn't put off by the first time. So, <laughs> this is Dan from Chairman of the Board. Hi. All right. And before we get started talking about the list, this is where you hey, basically yeah. get to... Oh. Right. Like I say, his internet is uh, hit and miss, so hopefully he'll be able to <laughs> stick around. But we'll see how much his internet lasts while he plugs himself for 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> That's your cue, Dan. Get talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You? So I'm Dan. I'm chairman of the. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I can hear me. Apologies for the internet. Yeah, apologies for the internet today. Um, yeah, so I'm Dan. I'm chairman of the board. Um, much like Luke, um, I am a one-man channel. I'm obviously from the UK. Um, most of my content is based around kind of Eurocentric games, um, but I also cover other stuff. I, I like a lot of fillers and kind of card-driven games as well. And uh, yeah, glad to be back. I um, really enjoyed working with Luke last time. And um, yeah, I think our, our styles complement each other quite well because we are pretty much on the polar opposite end of the spectrum and what we enjoy. <laughs> so hopefully Just you guys uh, enjoy what we talk about today. <laughs> we do have that. I mean, that was the interesting thing there. So yep, lots of different games. A lot of them that I would never play to save my life. I'm pretty certain of, there's a good few there that I would... Uh, yep, nope, nope. Not one I would play, but the top 100 certainly an interesting one and still waiting for that to finish. But <laughs> as I know from first hand, it takes a long time to get top 100s done. So I sympathize with anybody who gets uh, held back with that. Um, but at least you've got the chance to actually yeah. do things like the monthly things, which I wish I had more time for. I really do need to do a bit of a stock of what content I put out once I get past Christmas, you know, kind of like to start a new season for 2023. So we'll see. But uh, that's all well and good. So the... The top 10 we got this one. Normally, Patreons, I give them a list and they vote on the favorite ones and I do those. That was why the overrated games one came up last time and we had fun with that one with me and Brandon. Um, this one is not one that was on the Patreon list because there were a couple that we were thinking of doing. The like mm -hmm. games we thought should be in the BGG top 10. But then Dan had this idea <laughs> for games that we dislike but respect. Which actually turned out to be a pretty interesting topic, especially when I was having difficulty coming up with 10, because a lot of games that I dislike, I don't tend to respect. So I was trying to find 10 games that I can actually give some props to, <laughs> as opposed to just rant and say how bad they are. So it's like, okay, that was tricky in itself. But as you say, because we are polar opposites in terms of tastes, you know, like your games that you love are far different from mine. Mm. I'm... As much as we'll probably get the same polar opposite with like games, like presumably games that I like will be ones that you dislike in that. But it'd be interesting to see which ones you actually turn around and say, oh, you know, I can still respect this one despite it. And it's like, hmm, <laughs> that's going to be tricky. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, um, like a lot of the times I, I can differentiate what I like to what's good or not. And then maybe, maybe you're a bit more harsh in that respect. Like there's a lot of things where... I, I don't <laughs> I don't like, roll. you know yeah yeah that's fine that, absolutely nothing no issue with that <laughs> but a lot of these games I think are objectively solid designs they're just away from my my preferences um and I would even recommend these to the right person you know, under the right circumstances even though I don't like them myself so I thought it was a nice blend of being you know negative in a way but putting a positive spin on the negative to give a more you know well-rounded balanced uh, opinion yeah, this is basically like going down in stages. So we've had the overrated one, which is basically like the upper echelon <laughs> of, yeah, like negative ones. I mean, short of saying games I actively hate. Yeah. But then this one's kind of the next step down saying, I still don't like these games, but I can kind of go uh, in a different world. I would like them um, and stuff like that. Or, you know, and then as and then maybe the next one I do will have to be a positive one at that point. You know, it'll get better. <laughs> it'll get better. 
Yeah, um, I think, yeah, you do some positivity after that. And I said, I know one of the topics we were going to discuss was like top 10 game, top 10 games that should be in the top 10 on Board Game Geek. But I think ultimately I probably would have le lent towards games that you probably expect me to say. So I thought this might be a bit of a quirky <laughs> list. It may be somewhat different. And don't worry, Jeffrey, we'll catch you later. Um, but the, I mean, with that one, that would have been a half positive, half negative, because I would have been saying that these games are awesome and should be up there. But then I'd also be ranting as to why certain games are up there. So, <laughs> and I'd have to be careful as to sort of think, well, you know, I love Ark Nova the bits. It's in the top 10, but does it really need to be in the top 10? Probably not quite yet. But, <laughs> but then mm -hmm. I can say that about everything else that's in that top 10, frankly. Um, I don't quite see how Endless Winter would make this list. I gave it an 8 out of 10. That's a good, that's a great game on my score. So I don't see how that fits the dislike list. <laughs> um, yes, I, yes, I, well, yes, I think the mega lifts are a bit of a waste of space in it, but still, that's a, that's a flaw with the game. That's nothing else. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, did you actually struggle to make the list like I did? Um, top half of the list, I, I did not struggle at all. Um, bottom half of the list, a little bit more, um, particularly the bottom spots, because I could have shuffled a few things up and, you know, honourable mentions up into the list and vice versa. But I'm quite happy. I'm quite content with the 10 games I've got here. And I think there's a bunch of different reasons as well why, you know, why I do, you know, respect them. Yeah, I'm hoping that even if I do hit on some uh, sacred cows from some people, I'll be able to redeem myself by going, it's like, yes, but I do respect you for liking it. Granted, there's going to be a few yeah. games that, I dislike that. It's like, yeah, there's no chance I'll appear on this list. But to be honest, I think all of those you would have seen in the last top 10 I did. So that would have been mm. there. And sorry, look, look those yeah, spoiler alert. We're not getting Concordia on this list. Okay. I've never respected that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a given. <laughs> so something would have had to, although one game on my list, I have ranted a bit about before in the past and it has warmed up a bit more. So, I mean, that one might shock a few people, but we'll see. And yeah, yeah, Scout ain't appearing either. <laughs> so, it's like no respect for that little game. <laughs> Not happening. You... <laughs> what was that? You didn't... <laughs> ah, that works with it. Anyway. Oh, I said, you... yeah, some of, the th some of the things you say, I'm like, how, how can you not like these games? <laughs> I'm sorry, Scout just really rubbed me the wrong way, that one. <laughs> it's like, Grogan tried his best to teach me a lesson, and then I tried my best to get into it afterwards. But it's just like, yeah, why? I'm not getting it. It's like, it's not working for me. But that's like different strokes, different folks. All right, wow. let's get a move on. What was that? Go for okay, it. Okay, so Go am I first? first? Yep, guess always cool, first. Cool, yeah, so my, uh, my number... Okay. My, my number 10 is one that's certainly a lot of people's favorite game of all time, you know, quite commonly, actually. Um, my number 10 is, is Twilight Imperium, um, fourth edition, I suppose. Um, and the reason I don't like this one is a lot of the kind of low-hanging fruit, um, too long, it's <laughs> way too long for me. I mean, you know, you're talking six hours, maybe a bit longer than that, if you have the full, you know, range of Sounds players there. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. And also... Um, I'm not a theme guy, you know, you know this. I'm, I'm definitely a, a mechanical guy. Theme means next to nothing for me. But there is kind of one exception to that. And when it comes to sci-fi games, sci-fi for me is a, is a huge turnoff. I don't know what it is. Something the way I'm wired. I've always never been interested in uh, in sci-fi at all. So none of so your favorite just, games have got anything to do with sci-fi. So. <laughs> no, absolutely not. The one exception <laughs> is Pulsar, but that's obviously, um, you know. That's, that is true. But then a mechanical yeah. euro, yeah. Calling that yeah. sci-fi is uh, stretching it. <laughs> exactly, um, and also this. What obviously the um, one of the main features in terms of the combat in this game is is dice rolling, roll to resolve. I, I despise roll to resolve games. Um, I don't understand it. Um, but hey, I, I can understand that a lot of people do like that excitement of it, that random random nature of it. So again, the, a lot of the a lot of the reasons I don't like it are pretty obvious reasons, but. I have to sit back and think, you know, this is this game really did pull off the whole scope and the epicness of what this game should be. So it does what it says on the tin, you know, it delivers what it promises and it does have that true epic feel to it and that big kind of micro, you know, pers uh, macro pers perspective. Um, I also think it's um, the main mechanism of the action selection system is, is fantastic. You know, I love it in mm. games like Puerto Rico. I like it in games like... Um, I can't think of oh, Race for the Galaxy, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, like really cool 
you know, me mechanical wise it works and it does it does well and i have to think you know if i if i stepped away from what this was and say there was a game that was slightly tweaked for someone like me where maybe the combat system was was changed to something a bit more deterministic um mm -hmm. maybe there was a different setting um if, if you've made this medieval and it was a bunch of castles you were trying to invade and you were you know i I would yeah, absolutely we've love seen that. that so many times, <laughs> but it, it's never done as well as this. It's never done as well as this. And I, one thing I yeah. really loved about this game is, um, and this is what I remember about it because I've only played it like two or three times, and this was many years ago. But I had you know, strong, distinct memories in my mind when you do this kind of like political phase, and you can do like this voting system where yeah. some things come into play. I think that's so that's so clever, and it can really can make those standout moments. But yeah, it's just one of those games where I can completely understand if you love if you love sci-fi, um, and you know, this is your cup of tea. Then what more could you ask for? You know, you'd be absolutely reveling in this if this is your you know if this is your taste. So for that, I give it full respect, and I never question anybody who thinks this is their favorite game. Because I think you know, bless you, you've got you've got a game that's tailor made for you, and you can mm. enjoy it. So it yeah, definitely my... needs that definitely needs that time commitment. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. I know somebody mentioned yeah. about like I don't miss uh was it UK internet connections? My internet is flawless, thank you very much. If anything, I thought oh. the Americans had more problems with the internet sometimes. Uh, I forget who you have as a provider, T F and I or something, I don't know, something something with initials and they're always a bit mad but uh i mean you know like i say you've seen some of the dice tower streams with their internet but now nah, usually we're all right in the uk it just depends on region but now nah, the twilight imperium is a good one it's it's huge it's epic i love sci-fi but man god yeah does this thing need to be six plus hours <laughs> it's just oh, no. it's just mainly a length thing all right number <laughs> 10 well funny enough amusingly I've also got Twilight in the Struggle. Of, um, sorry, I've just literally just spoiled it. Fine, there you go, Twilight Struggle. I was literally trying to say I've got Twilight in the name, and then I just said the entire thing. Oh, well, that's ruined. <laughs> Start the stream again. All right, now, this one is kind of... It's a slight catch-all as well, because it's not just twilight struggle it's kind of a lot of gmt games and stuff as well like i mean i am not a fan of this game at all but i really know that i'm not the target audience for this thing it's it i get that if you're willing to put the time and effort into learning this thing it can be a really good two player back and forth i just don't have any interest in the politics and this cold war theme it's just you know you know my connection with the cold war is literally james bond movies i literally i'm not a historian <laughs> fan and yeah, and so this sort of back and forth thing was fine. I didn't like the the dice rolling for space race, and it's one of those things where you kind of have to know the cards ahead of time. Like, oh god, somebody's done some weird paste ups on this one here. But but yeah, you, like if I'm playing this new, <laughs> and if I'm new and somebody else who's teaching me knows this game inside out, they will wreck me because I won't know what kind of retaliations and things can come out. So it, I get, I get why it's. I get why it's popular. I still don't get why it's so high in the board game geek rankings. Hence, this is kind of lower on my list down to number 10. But GMT games in general are a bit like this. They're all these political themes. They're two players, three maybe if you're lucky. They're very sort of thinky, very strategic. And they're thematic if you're into this kind of theme. It's just they tend to not, with the exception of, I think, Dominant Species Marine, the GMT games have just not generally sat well with me but yeah i'd be hard pressed to call them like oh yeah these are terrible games or anything that just a different genre are these on your shelf gmt stuff no absolutely not actually um i've, I've not played this one i have played a couple of other gmt games which i have not enjoyed at all um but yeah this one i don't know what it is i think a bit like you i'm not willing to go down the rabbit hole and get really familiar with it commit to the game with one other player because you know you from, from what I understand, this one, you don't really want to be playing with a bunch of different players because you're going to have that <laughs> experience in imbalance yeah. and it's just not going to be fun. So I'd give it a go, but I can imagine myself giving it a go and not liking it. But um, but yeah, obviously extremely respected game, but I can't testify because I've not, I've not played it myself. Yeah, just one of those things. Like, you've got to be on equal measure. I, you can play these cards and they'll have the events on them and mm. a photograph and, and I won't know the first thing about what it's talking about. So I'm not like going, oh, this this card reflects this part of history. It's like, no, I'm literally just playing a card titled something Liberation and I have no idea what it's on about. You know, it's <laughs> it doesn't 
work as well. Now, I mean, if, if there's an app for this game, I don't know if an AI is a good opponent. Whether they, I mean, they know obviously everything inside out, so you'll, it'll be an uphill struggle, I guess. But I guess that's in mm. the name. But nah, it's like I say, I get it. But I think GMT games in general, because I played a couple of those like Churchill and uh, I can't remember the other ones, but Churchill was definitely one I remember. And it was kind of like, I get it. But yeah, <laughs> they're just, it's different, different or was it different audience? And it just clearly is not for me. All right, nines. Yeah. Okay, so my number nine is one that I wasn't too sure to put on the list or not, but I'm, I'm quite happy it's here now. This is uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, so Ooh. I think with a lot of board games, <laughs> you you go through uh, almost like a, a stage or an evolution where you normally touch base with magic along the way. Um, I did that. I played magic for a few years before I did go down the rabbit hole of, of board gaming. Um, and the things I don't like about it, you know, quite simple stuff. I don't like the business model of having to keep on buying these packs. Um, I don't yeah. like, yeah, I, I, I don't like the idea of um, basically paying to win, you know, you, you're paying to get the better cards, I suppose, and just the whole general, I suppose the culture of the game, I suppose, the, you know, that, that power creeping, trying to squeeze every, you know, every power level you can, you're min-maxing absolutely everything, and I don't like deck building in, in its entirety, you know, I, I'm not one to, you know, like play like LCGs, for example, and then spend an hour tinkering with my deck before I play a scenario. That, that mm. for me, is a big turn off. I've got no interest in doing that. But I can understand that people who like or have that st style of mindset um, do enjoy that, you know, just take this card out, get this one in, keep on, you know, these minor improvements. So again, I completely appreciate that. But I think the thing I, I appreciate most about this game is... Well, number one, it's longevity. You know, this has clearly stood the test Poor of time. Blimey, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think a big part of that is because of how flexible and how simple the actual core framework of the game is. You know, mm. the actual mechanisms themselves are as easy as it gets. But all the keywords and things, that's, that's what adds, obviously, the spice to the game. And I generally don't like a ton of keywords and things in my games anyway. Um, but, but yeah, I could can see like this is uh you know it's a lifestyle game you know if you want to invest in magic you can be set for life playing magic with with a group but mm. yeah I'm, it's, it's not for me i mean I, I would happily play this game if i've got someone in the same mindset as me who wants to go in for a bit of fun two maybe preset decks that we know are balanced because you know the designers said so i would happily yeah, play they, a few games of this they used to do the dual decks and i don't think they do yeah. anymore and that would have been if i was going to keep playing magic i'd just stick to them because they're balanced against each other i used to be a magic player back at university and yeah time sync money sync a few disgruntled people who i remember beating in tournaments who took it somewhat uh harshly and it's just like yeah it's a very you you can be very unlucky with who you end up playing magic against <laughs> you know they're either going to wipe the floor of you yeah, and gloat about yeah. it or they're going to give you death threats as a response i'm not kidding i had one before it's you know some people do take this a little bit too far um i don't know what the challenger one is i know the commander decks i quite like they were like pre-constructed hundred card decks they're quite cool uh i I must admit, like, yeah. I mean, I don't like this like model either well. anymore. This, I mean, what, when did this come out? 1997? Was it 1997, I think, this came out? 90, oh, three. Yeah, no, 96, no, 97, no, 93. Like, yeah. No, it says 1993 here. Oh. I mean, that would have been the first one. So, which means that next year is the 30th anniversary. That's going to be uh, an interesting thing. They, if they don't do some big event to celebrate 30 years, I'll be surprised. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, LCGs, I still enjoy playing, but yeah. I must admit the deck building bits, my least favorite part of the LCG stuff. I tend to go online onto the net deck sites and just grab a deck and then build that and then stick with it. Cause at the end of the day, you can make the best deck in the world, but if you can't pilot it, it doesn't make any difference. So I'd rather at least cut the bit about making a decent deck in the first place and then just try and do well at piloting the thing. You can't. You, know, yeah. you give someone you give someone a nuke or something they still need to know how to fire the thing it's it's not going to just wipe the floor with the enemy in no time at all so yeah i totally get this one but if i i would happily just grab a deck and play it now but that's literally the only way you're going to get me to play magic yeah. or any ccg model i can say not for me yeah exactly the same all right armor nine i i 
I'd be surprised that this isn't on your shelf or somewhere, because I swear I've heard you like this one, or at least the one before it. It came out as a fantasy version okay. but originally, and I did play it, and I did like it for a bit, but sort of burnt out a bit and got a little bit frustrated with it. Then a sequel came out in sci-fi mode, which is ranked somewhat too highly on Board Game Geek, I've got to admit. But I do got to give some props that I do find Gaia Project to be overall a better game than its predecessor of Terra Mystica overall. I just wish that this one was just a bit easier to kind of, in a sense, get to the table and not quite be so punishing. And why are all the pictures just lame bits of those things? <laughs> there we go. That's a bit better. This one is an improvement over the other one because I do like the tech tracks. And I do, I do like the fact that there's a variety of races. I wish they were more balanced, but yeah, this whole idea that you would bid, but to get specific races. I mean, if you have to do that before a game starts, that's kind of proof that the races aren't balanced. But it is very thinky. I do like the variety of past to victory, and you know, uncovering stuff off your board and having to decide right, I got to put stuff back on, take stuff off, you know, get it in sequence. It's a good efficiency puzzle. I still don't quite get how the uh, distance rules work in this game for going to different planets i do find that a bit fiddly but it's let's say it's it's generally a game that i think is like it's fine it's you know i don't think it should be as high as it is on bgg but i have enjoyed plays of it preferably with just maybe one or two other opponents and preferably not ones who are experts at the game so i don't get the floor wiped with me because <laughs> you know winning this game is not something that's a, a common place but you know i, I, I get it but yeah, this one I mean, of your faves are coming, I, I am a big fan of, of Terra Mystica, actually. But as you said, I don't think I would I would jump into Terra Mystica knowing that a bunch of other players are way better than me, because um, it hmm. wouldn't be as enjoyable. But I, I have it, I do have it on my shelf, and I play it with people who are rubbish at it, like I am, and I've always had a good time with it. And I actually think that Terra Mystica. Sorry, I am talking about Terra Mystica because I've only I've only played that one and not not it's this. It's basically one. the same game, as I think. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, I'm not, I can't I can't even tell the differences. Um, hmm. But yeah, I've actually I actually think that Terra Mystica gets a bit of a bad rep in saying it's so it's so gamey. It's really you know it's like um, a difficult game to grok and things. I actually think it's relatively streamlined and quite easy to play. Um, not it's not, it's not so much the rules thing set. It's it's not the rules. It's how to do well because you can easily paint yourself into a corner and then oh, you're yeah. kind of wiped out for the rest of the game. And pseudo knockouts not something I'm a fan of generally. Hence, I wouldn't want to play this with people who knew exactly what they were doing because it's just like, well, I might as well just give you the game straight away. Uh, the the one thing I was I can't remember if Gaia Project does it as well, but I was never a fan of the rule where you got cheaper buildings if you built next to someone else, because particularly in a three player game, it usually meant that one two players were doing all right and one player got left by themselves and were basically on the back foot. It's right. there's like some little niggle rules that I would certainly want to change and like shorten okay. it a bit more. I don't know what I would think of Terra Nova, the um the normal the little midget one that came out i haven't really heard that many people go mad for it no it's, it seemed it seemed to me like there wasn't that much of a step down from terra mystica like the extra effort to edit down terra mystica seemed minor in order yeah. to release a whole new game it seemed a bit strange yeah it's kind of I, from what i heard about it i thought if you're trying to make this like my first terra mystica you're not doing a very yeah. good job of doing it um Completely. i did try it i did try it solo but, I mean, I, I liked it fine solo. If anything, actually, I probably preferred it solo to multiplayer in a sense. But it was just, then it was just trying to understand the the rules and, like, all the different factions. I mean, I've got, like, what, like 10, 12 in the, in the box. And I can barely figure out the first couple that I'm playing, let alone try out all the rest. It's It, it, it got to a point where it was just a little bit unwieldy for me. And you know me, I'm a big theme person. So I want theme to uh you know I, I want theme in my games and terror Mystica and gaia project never tried to introduce any kind of theme in their games i mean they changed it from fantasy to sci-fi i don't see what the point of that was you might as well have just kept it in there but i think they, at least they tried to make some effort but no i, I like it fine i give it i give it respect <laughs> yeah that's what i mean it's doing well and i see i i played it and saw the appeal of it it just was like oh yeah this is not one that i'm going to continue playing for much more but when people get it out i'm like ah cool i remember a time when that was fine <laughs> okay on to it <laughs> good okay so my number eight is 
a feast for Odin. Um, this one for me, one you don't like. Okay. Uh, yeah, this one. I'm not saying I, I. I know this is we dislike. But I mean, this one. It just. I got no desire to play it anymore. Um, for me, because there's so much going on here, I feel like a lot of the extra stuff wasn't ultimately necessary. I think you cut 30% from this game and it wouldn't be a worse game for it. Um, Could use and, a bit of streamlining, yes. <laughs> yeah, but at the same at the same time, I understand that's why people like this one because you can try different things each time. It's almost like a, a sandboxy style Euro because again, you can do something completely different this time and ignore a whole part of the game that you did last time it's but for me because there are so many worker placement spots and you know things you can do it did lose some of that kind of pure turn angst that you get from a lot of the great worker placement games in in my opinion um but again i understand if if you are uh, maybe you have a smaller collection and you have something like this in that it does have a lot of uh, mechanisms in one game so it is a bit of a kitchen <laughs> sink style game you've got the you know you've got the polyominoes you've got obviously the worker placement um you've even got some like you know roll to resolve style collecting resources and things so it is a lot you know a lot in one box but yeah for me it just it just lost a bit of focus i felt like once i discovered everything the game had to offer the appeal for me to come back to it wasn't there so like for me the fun was like pressing buttons and see what happens but once mm. i pressed everything it was like well that takes a while to press of... every button in this game though <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is true but still i i thought like once i'd grokked it and i didn't have the desire to go back and explore it any any further and i, I also really didn't like the card play in this one I, I, maybe i was missing a trick with it but no, i felt like that... it was really tacked on I agree, actually, because, I mean, I've still got this in the collection, but it is lower down in my Rosenbergs than, I mean, out of the ones I like, it is low down in that set. Because I do, I mean, I like the Polyomino phone, even though the theme makes no sense. I do like having a lot of the worker placement spots, although, to be honest, if I do play this, it's generally solo only, because the time it takes to teach and play a three or four player game of this is just ridiculous. But right. and, and the solo mode seems to work quite well, actually. I quite like the way it happens. But okay. I like having a lot of options. It's open. That appeals to me. But there were some parts of this that were a bit of a pain. You, Norwegians is like the essential expansion to this game. Otherwise, it just fundamentally is not balanced. I have um, heard that. Yeah, you've got to get that expansion, which is already a knock-on effect. And yeah, I agree. The, the card system, I was a bit let down by because... Not the weapon stuff, but those occupations, they just didn't feel worth going for. You mm. didn't get a lot of points from them. They didn't give you a ton of great bonuses. And of course, you're drawing from a giant deck. You've no idea if you're going to get anything remotely useful. So I have I tend to... The problem is I, I know I should avoid them because I know they're not very good. But I want to collect them because it's thematically more interesting to say I'm the baker. <laughs> right. But I know I'm just shooting myself in the foot every time I try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I appreciate it. I mean, there is, but for me, I'd, I'd rather play something a bit, a bit tighter, where you're stepping on each other's mm. toes a bit more. I think. Um, but, but yeah, uh, it's just, it's just one that didn't, it didn't click with me, to, to be honest. And and once I'd, yeah, once I'd got out of my system, I didn't really feel the desire to go back to it. But, but hey, I know it's a yeah. very popular game. And to be honest, I feel that way about most Rosenberg games. I've not really found the one for me yet. And the ones I do like are the ones really light, like games like Nova Luna, I think are fantastic. But um, so your more is abstracts then? <laughs> I suppose, yeah, I suppose. I've, I I wasn't a huge fan of La Havre because that's amazing. I would have expected you to have sort of like La Havre. I know you probably wouldn't have liked Caverna because you'd have probably found that too open. <laughs> And I love Caverna. Okay. Um, Coffee Maker mentioned Fields of Isle. That's my favorite Rosenberg. But then you might find that that's way too open because that's basically the kitchen sink of point salads. Right. It's like, you know, crazy amount of options you've got in there. But then that's one thing I love about it. And I don't find that there's one thing in Fields of Isle where I'm playing it and going, oh, yeah, this strategy will suck. No, it's like this mm. strategy will work. I mean, everything's getting your points. It's just a case of being efficient with it. Whereas here it's like yeah there's a few things to try but you need the expansion to make animals even worth going for and even right. then it's possible to just make emigration kind of spiral out of control so it's it's like i say it's this one is still on my top 100 because i still enjoy it but i don't know if it's going to last much longer at this rate because i can't remember the okay. last time i got this out every time i'm thinking right i fancy playing a solo uwe rosenberg game i look at this and then i go yeah but i got fields of Arl. <laughs> it's just that one drags me there so much quicker than 
this yeah. one does you know so this this was one that i yeah i definitely respect this game but it's i don't dislike it i think it's just a case that when a lot of his heavy games kind of feel the same now they're just blending together and now you've suddenly got to decide mm-hmm. well, which one's your favorite yeah and yeah do you need them all that's the, that's the thing no not gotta catch them all when it comes to uri rosenberg games okay <laughs> So on the oh yeah, speaking of a uh, giant games. In fact, I don't know. Is this an Uri Rosenberg game? I need to check as I look it up. I don't think it was Uri Rosenberg. It is a giant epic. Um, nope, Tim Poles or something did this one, but it is from Lookout Games as well. Not a fan of it. It's regarded as an epic strategy game, and yeah, it certainly is epic because if you want to play the full game, you've got to play it in four separate eras, which is a little bit ridiculous. The Colonist, though, does have some oh. good stuff going for it. You know, I uh, there was some stuff about this that did intrigue me to it. I mean, one, it's this style of game, you know, farming, resource management, you know, build up, build up some little techs and that, you know, that all sounded good. I particularly like the colony system in this. I like the idea that you can go grab a different colony. There's different ones each game, and they give you some special bonuses depending on which colony you go for and how far you level it up. All that stuff was great. Production quality could be better. There's way too many of these chits. But, oh my word, is this game ridiculously long. <laughs> so I, I didn't like the way it was split up into this four-era system. The idea that you needed to play... Like each era came out very like different. The first era, you basically built a shed, and that was basically it. You know, I have I've gathered some wood, a couple of pebbles, and I built a shed. Era one is over, and yet it probably still took you the length of time to teach the game, and probably a good forty five minutes to get through that era. And then you go into era two, and you build a little bit more, but then the really interesting stuff doesn't come out until era three and four. You could skip ahead to that bit, but then you miss out on the build up beforehand, so you don't really get a the be- there's no best of both worlds it's all compromise it's like one bit's going to get on your nerves otherwise you've got to find yourself a good six seven hours to play all four acts of this game which is just kind of ridiculous <laughs> but it, it was weird it, it, it's that theme that i do like this map thing i found good you know like i want to go to these different buildings and people are putting different ones down it's like oh i'll come use that now or I'll go go grab this it's, it's still the farming theme that i like in games just doesn't need to be quite this ridiculously epic. <laughs> mm. I don't know what, oh god, somebody building an insert. I thought, what kind of picture is that? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've not, um, I've not played this one. I do have a friend who owns it, but um, yeah, that I've heard it's really long. That's a big, you know, a big obstacle for me. I, my tolerance for longer games has gone down rapidly, probably in the last mm. year or two. Game um, but I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's loads of you know mechanisms in here that I'd enjoy personally. But as you said, if if you are jumping through a lot of hoops in the first half of the game, just going through the motions, I could see myself getting frustrated with a game like that, just wanting to just you know give it a push, um, and not you know not dawdling behind, waiting to get to the fun bit. So, yeah, I think I'm, I'm kind of apprehensive. I will give it a, I will give it a play, I'm sure, in the future. But um, I'm going to have to be in the right mindset and prepare for the long haul, I suppose. <laughs> and and the long teach. I mean, this thing's on eternally oh, on right. sale. Every time yeah. I see it, it's on sale because this is not a super popular game. I mean, somebody who, people who claim, like, oh, yeah, this is like one of their best games ever. It's like, yeah, that's for them personally because they are in a minority <laughs> because it doesn't, it's not, it wouldn't be on sale otherwise. Um, although mechanics yeah. wise, there is one thing I do actively not like in the game. It's the storage mechanic. I think like depending on how big your shed is, you can only store so many resources at once. Um, and it's like, oh, I can only store two wood and a, you know, and a stone or something. And it's like, seriously, you can't just build a, like a bigger like storage unit and that, you know, it just feels like it's so tight. Like the, you're constrained so much by the storage mechanism, not to mention right. it's wood and brick and stuff. I'm sure you could leave it outside. I don't need a storage <laughs> shed. Bricks will survive in the rain. I mean, our houses are made out of rain. Trees are made out of wood. They survive the rain. I don't see why I can't just store it wherever the hell I like. But this thing's adamant that it must be under shelter, apparently. Yeah. yeah so I, I generally do like um, kind of games that have storage capacities, but not for no reason. Like that just seems a bit yeah unnecessary, as you say. I say it's it's kind of in there just to make it like oh yeah we just want to make it a you know 
tricky or yeah we want to make it yeah. tight for euro gamers it's like dude you've created like a seven eight hour epic euro i'm sure you can afford to streamline it just a bit yeah but i yeah. don't know some people some people just want to throw everything they can into a game but let's say they do that alone i mean you could probably house rule that well no actually no it would fundamentally change the game but like i say that rule aside a lot of the other stuff i like about it okay ready on Okay, so my number seven is one I'm sure you're going to disagree with me with. I know we both don't like this game, but I'm going to show, I'm sure you're not even going to give it any respect. And this is um, food. No, <laughs> food chain magnate. I love Concordia. Oh, right. <laughs> um, yeah, food chain magnate. Um, you're half me... right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, food chain food chain magnate. It's it's a very um, you know it's overused this word, but it's cutthroat. You know, this is a very unforgiving and punishing style game. Um, much like we've alluded to before, this is a game where if you are playing with somebody who knows the game, they are going to absolutely trounce you and make sure that you never want to play it again. Um, so I think if oh, I oh tell me about it <laughs> with somebody on my level and we do all... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if we if we learned this all together, then maybe it would be a different story, and I'd have a different you know opinion of of this game. But right now, I have no interest at all to play this one ever again. Um, so where's yeah, the respect coming for from? Me, way too long. <laughs> no, I'll get I'll get to it. Um, yeah, um, it's it's way too long, way too long for me, um, and especially as as you mentioned that pseudo player elimination. You can be out of this game round one. You're not making any ground up, and um, and yeah, you're out for it. But where I give it where, where I give it respect is the fact that um, number one I liked I liked some of the mechanisms I liked the milestones mechanism I thought that was quite cool if you're the first to do something you get an ability for the rest of the game I thought that was quite a cool little touch I, I did like that and I actually do respect the fact that this game is so deterministic I'm pretty sure there's zero luck in the game um, and if you have say you know, four of you who are all of the same mindset. You're all bloodthirsty players. You know, you're going for the jugular <laughs> and, you know, you, you know what you're getting into and you get it all at that same level. I can see you you, you guys having a, a lot of fun with this one again, if you are of that particular type. So, yeah, right group, I think, is a big um, is a big part of this one. Um, I also thought that some of the thematic ties were, you know, they made sense, you know. And again, I'm not, I don't put a lot of you know, uh, weight behind a theme. But I think the advertising things, you know, all the different ways you can advertise to customers, I thought it was really well done. You know, I think it's a good game. I think it's an, an, an objectively good game, but one that I got zero fun from. So, um, yeah, just not not my style. And, it, yeah, just a bit too... It just puts too much stock in people who've played it before. They're going to, again, they're going to take you to the to the cleaners. I feel like I could just take the exact blurb you've just said, trim out some of the sentences, leave certain bits in, like zero fun and that, and you'd basically just get my thoughts on this. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, the stuff that you have problems with, I totally wholeheartedly agree. This is cutthroat as all get out. You can be out of the game from turn two. It's kind mm. of ridiculous. Um, yeah. It Somebody needs to tell Splutter Games to draw up some artwork go find oh, some artists in their country it's horrendous i'm sorry it's it looks horrendous but it does uh the the stuff that the stuff that you respect it for i just can't respect it for i mean the milestones even then i mean milestones exist in other games but this thing of right if you're the first person to get the milestone you get the ability but the problem is that now means that it's rich get richer so you've already created a game where yeah. you can be knocked out really early and you're basically just saying well He's doing well. And by the way, he's doing even better now because yeah. we're giving him all this nice stuff. It's like, what? You're right. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's is... one thing I said. On, sorry, on paper, yeah, on paper, I like that mechanism. But in practice, it worked different. As, as you mentioned, it was a rich get richer kind of thing. And it made you somewhat paranoid about, am I doing the right thing here? Should I be going for this? This person's good at the game, so they've got this milestone and this milestone before I've got any. So, yeah, yeah, completely agree. This. No, I remember from there. It's like I've got nothing nice to look at. I've got the and then for four hours I'm just stuck there, like going through the motions. I, I know I can't catch up, so why am I even bothering? And just so much irks me with this. It's like yeah, getting respect from me for this game is going to be an impossibility. <laughs> it's just yeah. not one on there. But I mean, I, I mean that's the thing because I'd be surprised that you wouldn't like it i mean a bit then again right. i guess yeah the length and the cutthroatness i guess are two things that i know don't tend to no yeah it in was your games yeah I, I again big factor i generally don't like games when 
experience is a is a massive factor, like a huge factor. So means that, yeah. that uh, I mean, I agree that it should be a pretty high rate weight. Not that I put too much stock in the weight rankings on BGG, but you know, it's it's a game that's got a decent amount of rules overhead and literally requires you to play correctly from turn one, otherwise you lose. I mean, that deserves a pretty hefty weight rating. <laughs> You know, that seems, yeah. and it's not just defeatist. I just like fun games, <laughs> and this one was not one of them. Thankfully, though, I don't tend to see it on the table much anymore. I know a couple of mates of mine that are sort of diehard fans, but I still don't see them play it, frankly. So it's not like I have to be reminded of it on a regular basis, but it does keep popping up. <laughs> yeah, it does seem uh, to have quieted down a bit. It does seem to have quieted down a bit that game. Nobody talks about yeah. it as much. No. Yeah, even with the ketchup expansion or whatever it was supposed to be, I didn't suddenly see a resurgence for it. So it just sort of like, yeah, there's a few niche players that like love it to bits, and it's like, fine, mm. you've got four hours, so I can squeeze, you know, at least two games of Ark Nova in that time, so it's not a problem. <laughs> um, big words, that better not be on your list. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I like to... I like Ark Nova. Few <laughs> had to deal with Brandon last time for that. Alrighty, all right, my one. I mentioned earlier that there's a game that I did rant about a lot before, and granted, I still much prefer a certain game to this one. In fact, we've literally just mentioned it. Um, but I have warmed up a little bit more to the game that it replaced, which was the original Terraforming Mars. It, I had problems with this game for quite some time, Mainly with the fact of how long the game took, especially if you didn't have Prelude in there, that was like essential. But also that, you know, even with the drafting, you just ended up in situations where, you know, I'm the court that likes plants. Oh, look, there's no green cards. What am I supposed to do? And there was a little bit of that rich get richer style from it. But as time has gone on, I do like it a bit more, you know, to the point where I'm like, okay, fine. If Terraforming Mars is your thing, I get it. Because there is some stuff I do like in it, and I do like these card display, like these card tabo things of like, oh, I build up this nice little engine with options in front of me. This one just takes it a bit too slow for my liking. It takes a, you know, it. this one could have been a 90 minute game, but it ends up being like a three hour plus stretch. You know, Ark Nova can take a long time, but I get why that one does take a bit longer. This one, I feel like if the stat markers just moved up a little bit quicker it wouldn't be so bad but you find you don't actually have that many rounds in the game by the time it's over yet it's still taken that time to do but and the communal map thing i just never really noticed any difference between the maps frankly it's like you can play on hellas Silesia, or mars but it's still just basically a bunch of brown hexagons it's just changed where the river is and that's kind of really it <laughs> so i didn't I didn't get a huge amount from that, despite some do. But, you know, you, you put me in a free-player game of this with Prelude, and I'll, I'll play it, and then I'll still have a half-decent time with it. So this one has just built up over the years to say, okay, you know what? Cool. I love my Ark Nova. You love your Terraforming Mars. That's cool. <laughs> not a problem. As for all these other versions of it, I mean, Ares... Ares is still not that sure the game you know I like the mechanic like the race for the galaxy mechanic in it but I wanted that game to be like 45 minutes that game can still take 90 minutes plus with you know a decent amount of players it takes a while and the dice version I have no idea I mean just strapping the dice game onto something doesn't instantly make it better so <laughs> yeah um so this one um I've actually not played Terraforming Mars it's a bit of a kind of a guilty admission from me um again I've heard it go really long another big red flag for me um and you know you said you said that your game was arc nova out of this one for me there's like a kind of a third pillar to that as well so i was at kind of a point where i thought you know what what tableau builder am i going to get and i went for underwater cities and i think underwater cities will do what i want this game to do and i'm really happy with underwater cities so i don't think i need this one as well but i'm sure sooner or later i will manage to get a game that's played but um yeah i don't like i don't mind games going long um but i don't like games going long if it could be shorter what you said mm. so and that's for me from what again being kind of cemented by you saying that is the case so i just never really had that massive itch to get this one played i don't know why despite all the buzz maybe it is the the sci-fi thing again but um but yeah considering how popular this was it just somehow managed to uh you know, i managed to avoid it yeah i think you're your mic's breaking up a tiny bit. It might just be because your internet's having a slight thing. We got the gist of what you said, but there's definitely some bits there. 
Yeah, there's quite a few comments that are sort of siding with it. Yeah, I mean, you can terraform Mars in the time it takes to terraform Mars. Yes, definitely. Yeah, if you are halfway through the game, I can call the victor and you're at least the top two players. And if you're not one of them, then it's it's going to be like that. But yeah, a shorter game, less players, prelude, I'm cool. I don't need colonies that just elongates the game and makes uh, power plants ridiculously useful. Um, Venus doesn't really add anything that interesting with the sideboard. It's just more cards. Okay, great. But I'd rather just play normal Terraform Mars with Prelude shoved in. And I'd be kind of cool with that, really. But again, cap it at three players. Although I've played three player games of this where you get the one person who knew the game inside out, but wants to AP it and min max it like crazy. And it still takes three hours to play. And I'm like, seriously, this should not be an hour per player. Get a freaking move on. Mm. But. As a, it's it's cool and you can get me to in, enjoy it a bit more now, which is a step up from previous where I was kind of hating on it quite a bit. So maybe just because I was liking Art Nova more, this well, actually no, this was before Art Nova was a thing. So I I guess I was just warming up to it a little bit more, much like when you're terraforming the planet, and then as soon as Art Nova came out, I didn't really need to pay this any more attention. So it just had that. Yeah, that's all. I guess you should something there. All good with that. All right. So, uh, what about six? Okay. Yeah. So, my number six is Root. Um, so, very popular game again. Um, so, the reason I chose this one is pretty much for the style of game. You know, I've got no interest in sitting through the game being taught to, uh, you know, four different, four different players. Yeah. Four different <laughs> games at once. <laughs> Because uh, ultimately, is that going to affect your game if everybody else is playing a different game? No, no, it's not. Um, and it just means that you have to learn different things when you don't really need to know it. And you need to know what everybody else is capable of. And that, for me, is just such, um, it's such a steep learning curve to the point where it's just, it's just too much for me. Um, I, again, I apologize if my internet is, is breaking up. Um, I can't well, then, um, anything about it. It's all right. And on uh, yeah, my Wi-Fi... Uh... Kind of then. Um, carry on, carry on talking about root, and then when I'm talking about mine, see, see if whether like twinkling with your mic or something makes any difference. Where is it okay, based okay. again in the UK? Uh, I'm in Devon. I, I mean, I'm from the West Country before. It's, I know the internet's not that bad down there. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I apologize. Um, okay, okay, I'll, I'll continue then. But yeah, please let me know if it is um is really bad. Um, so yeah, it's just that the idea of learning all the different games at once is too much front-loading for me personally. Um, I don't really have a group that this would work for or with. Um, I just know it would be a massive, um, you know, massive deterrent for somebody else to learn this or, or to learn it all as a group. I'm going to lose the interest of everybody. Um, and yeah, it's just there's too much. Um, I thought there were some cards in the game that I, I weren't prepared for when I played this one, and it left me feeling a little bit kind of just disgruntled at times when something bad happened and I was like well how was I supposed to know that and um so yeah for that reason I, I didn't enjoy my experience with it um but ultimately I have to respect the fact that he has or the designer here has patched four separate games together into one cohesive thing so as a design feat I think it's absolutely brilliantly done like fantastically designed you have to be very, very clever to put a game like this together but for my own personal experience it wasn't really fun um and I didn't like again. I didn't like that front loading, and but the fact that he pulled it off, you know, pulled off those four different things into one game, I thought was quite impressive. So that's why Root is my number six. Fair dues. Yeah, that yeah, Root's a Root. Root like I say, I, I I gotta agree on that. Yeah, the design is it's it's a decent game. It's just not practical, and the app has kind of killed it. The app is such a good way to learn this game and play it that I'm almost like, well, when am I ever supposed to play it with four people randomly? It's just not going to happen. Mm. I don't know. It's just not going to work. But that's all right. All right. While I talk about mine, do you want to see what you can do with your mic? I'm not sure what else you can do at your end, but uh, have a little sure. tinker around while I'm doing that. Um, so on my six, uh, four letter word, um, still a big deal. Actually, have I still got root? Showing, one sec, take that off. Right, there we go. So, with mine, I've played this recently, and technically I've only played it once, 
But then, to be honest, this is not a game that you can play a lot of times. It's somewhat big. It's somewhat grandiose. Uh, it definitely requires a, a dedicated sort of group of people that are willing to learn it. But And it's also based on an IP that I'm not a massive fan of, certainly if uh, the recent movie is anything to go by. But I give respect that if you do have about seven, eight hours to spend on a... Not quite a social deduction game, but more like a negotiation style game. But there are worse things you could do than play Dune. Dune itself was an interesting experience when I played it. But it is a long experience. There is a lot of a uh, uh, sort of swinginess in the game that can kind of take people out. I do think the balance with these factions is not quite there. Because, uh, I mean, if you play the Bene Gesserit, for example, I think I was playing them... You really do have a bit of a weird game compared to everybody else. You can sort of get a lot of resources without even trying. Especially if you're the, uh, I think it was like the Emperor and the Spacing Guild just don't seem to have much of a problem. And a couple of mates of mine were playing it and they, and I'm, yeah, I'm talking about this version of doing the Gale Force 9 one. But we got to a point about three quarters of the way through where two players literally could not stand a chance of winning. So it's like, why are they there? But... There were some fun things to be had. It it had some of the negotiation in it. You had the bartering and some of the backstabbingness. And I do enjoy that with a lot of games. It's, as somebody has mentioned, it's showing a bit of its age, though. It's it's kind of dated. But it, despite the fact that they keep re-implementing it every now and again. And, you know, would I play it again? I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to commit to it. But it's it definitely does replicate... Dune, as in that universe, you know, that IP, and I must admit, you know, I'm not the massive fan of the IP. I mean, the recent movie was kind of supposed to be my entry into the lore or something, and all it did was bore the living Jesus out of me, so, uh, you know, that didn't help. But, yeah, I can give this one a bit of credit. There was some enjoyment I got from this, but a bit like the Twilight Imperium one you mentioned before, it's just like, oh man, how much time do I need to spend in this game you know, could it be a bit shorter? And I know they tried to release some, like, 30-minute version of this. And as far as I can tell, it's garbage because I've heard not one person talk highly of it or mention anything that great about it. So it's, I get what it's called, like a game of diplomacy and intrigue or something. But the fact that I've seen nobody mention it, I think, kind of speaks volumes as to how good that, that uh, re-implementation worked. Oh, yeah, I've not made... Um, like, I didn't really have the desire to. Nah, you're still choppy and crackly on that front. Um, try the. Uh, ah. sure. Do you want to try again? Um, okay, can you hear me now? Can hear you, but it still gets. Try, try... It still gets the crackly. Please join again. Um, yeah, leap. Yeah, leave the stream. Come back in. I'll see you come back in. And what I'll do is I'll talk about my five okay. first, and then we'll just swap the order around for that one. Okay. All right. See you in a sec. Cool. No worries. Yeah. All about that. So don't worry. He will be back. Just hopefully with uh, <laughs> some internet that goes in there. But yeah, continuing on with the whole Dune front. Just I I, I give it some props. You know, the game did give me some enjoyment, but. The whole guessing a turn thing, I just thought was like, okay, seriously, how are you supposed to make that work? I don't know how you can possibly do it. But I, like I said, I've only played it once. It, you know, I had to get a lot of the lore explained to me, uh, you know, in terms of understanding who was who and what was going on. But it, it was fine. You know, if people are fans of it and want to play it at conventions, I can totally see why i think it's just one of those that needs a dedicated group who knows exactly what they're doing no randoms no casuals and you'll go pretty well so we'll have to we'll stick with that i guess right well while we wait for dan to sort out his internet connection we're just going to move on to fives and we'll just change the order around for that number so hopefully we can keep track of what's going on He's kind of weird, though. He's only in Devon. I mean, I, although saying that my parents are in Somerset and their internet connection is dodgy, but then Paul Grogan usually doesn't have too much trouble and he's in Devon. So, hmm, I don't know. But I guess I take my uh, my internet for granted, which I think is Sky. 
and it was BT, but I think in this new estate, I just seem to have a flawless internet connection for the most part. All right, let's... Oh. Go ahead, please. Yeah, any better or not? That was better, yeah. All right, we'll go with that for now. You know, people had suggested resetting the router and bits like that, but yeah, it sounded like you did need an off and on again uh, moment there. <laughs> okay, um, okay. But you're in time because I've literally just moved on to five, so you might as well just carry on with yours then. <laughs> okay, because my number five is Inish. Um, Inish I thought was quite an interesting uh, game, actually. Um, but the reasons I, I didn't like it, it was a little bit too abstract for me in the way it felt like, it, almost like chess-like in a way. And you'd, you'd find yourself in a lot of like stalemate style situations, which felt a bit rigid for me at times. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where you, you almost feel a bit paranoid at all times trying to spin all those plates and make sure nothing is going to work against you. Um, and I also felt like um, some of the cards in terms of, I think there was like two different decks of cards. There's the normal cards you draft from, and then there's yeah. this other stack you could get these special special cards from. I thought those yeah. were quite inconsistent in their power levels. Like some of them would be like, whoa, this is incredible. And then some of them would be like, well, I got this card and it's quite circumstantial and, and not so great. Um, so those were the reasons I didn't really like it as, you know, as, as much as I probably could have. And I also, oh, sorry, I also didn't like the, um, I didn't like the combat system. Um, particularly if you play, well, well, when I play with people, we, we're normally quite stubborn players. So if we get into a combat, we're going to pretty much go through our whole deck of cards because no one wants to give up any, you know, no one wants to take the loss, I suppose. I was um, say, cause it's deterministic in a way, though. Isn't that more what you want? <laughs> it is, it is. But I, I, I don't know. I thought like it's just a matter of you bleeding all your cards and probably somebody else capitalizing because of that. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't hate that part, but I just thought I, I would have liked it to be done in a different way. But there were some certainly a lot of things I did like about it. Um, I liked how all the pack cards was so that you're drafting, so it didn't take too long to get familiar with the actual cards in the deck, and you could actually make some pretty savvy plays because of that. Like you know, yeah. if you know your opponent's going to go for something, make, going to make a big move, you can make sure you grab that veto card, whatever, to to stop them mm. doing it. Um, and I also actually really like this very minor rule in the game. And you might be more familiar with this, Luke, than I remember, because it's been quite a few years. But I believe when you do the pass and draft thing, you don't actually have to lock in the cards you've taken previously. Like, Correct. You, is that right? You yeah, you take I your four cards. Was... I think you take your four cards and then you choose one from those and you keep it handy. But what you do is that the three you get passed over, you then add the card you just took to it. And then you got to take two cards and then you rinse and repeat and then take three cards. So yeah. you could technically keep the card that you drafted first all the way through, but uh, you literally could decide to, to draft bits later to say, you know, what? I don't need that anymore because I found a better combination. That is pretty sweet. I do admit. Um, this one's since left a collection. It it was in there, but I I like a lot of the stuff to it. I like the combat. I love the card system. I think it looks gorgeous. And the expansion does shorten the game, which is needed because it will it could drag on a bit without the expansion. The expansion throws in a yeah. with the whole like I've got the crown. I'm going to win next turn thing. The expansion introduces a variant, which means that after that happens, there's another cap on the game length. So it can't just instantly go right. back and forth, back and forth between loads of people and never finish. Um, so that's always quite a good one. But playing this with people who don't know what they're doing does drag this one out a bit. And it was just another one of those deals where nobody wants to try the game. I can't get a group of people who know what they're doing with it. I can't keep it any longer, which was a shame because argh, it was enjoyable. Yeah. So and what, what I like about this game as well is that it took a bit of a different approach to the whole area control thing where it's mm. not like the traditional like you know blood rage rising sun smash each other's face in it was a bit yeah. more of a sophisticated <laughs> game and the way it, it just I, I you know i appreciate that it's feel different to anything else i love the artwork in the game as well i think it looks absolutely gorgeous i mean the card art is, is amazing um yeah. but but yeah again I, a game i totally respect but my player is is relatively low um that definitely has some redeeming features for sure, and I can see why you know, it is rated quite quite highly, and a lot of people do enjoy it. So yeah, that's my number five, uh, Inish. I'm surprised it's rated highly because I mean I'd never see anyone play it because most people don't know how to play it or have never tried it. Um, although we mentioned like number of people 
pronouncing. I thought it was Viscounts. Isn't it Viscounts? Isn't the S silent or whatever in that word? But I don't know. Maybe I've been pronouncing it wrong for ages. I know it's not Viscounts or anything strange like that. So, but that seems to be the next part. And and I thought it was it was Inish. Isn't it? What you almost sound like it's got a H on the end, or how did you pronounce it? Yeah, I say Inish. Oh, yeah. Say. Yeah, well, I mean, what are there people out there who seriously pronounce it, you know, in is or inis? I mean, I hope not, because that seems a little bit insane. <laughs> now, the, this one fits. I mean, I still like it, but it was just it was another one of those impractical games that I just could not get played. Um, and apparently, I'm right on the Viscounts. Sweet. <laughs> I mean, why didn't they just pick a different rank? Frankly, why did it have to be Viscount? Just pick something else that's pronounceable. <laughs> All right, five. Oh boy, me, yeah. Um, if you thought Dune was taking an IP and make and making a game that's cutthroat, in your face, nasty, uh, <laughs> you know, and wants to keep you there for multiple hours while you backstab everybody, well then you've seen nothing yet when you've uh, played this one. And I have played it a couple of times, and I did, I did like the thematic thing of this, and I definitely played this when I was into the TV series a bit more. This was long before the. Uh, the series eight debacle for game of thrones but the big second edition game as much as i'm not the biggest fan of it i can see why if people want to get this out at a convention they're going to have a good time with it because it does do what it wants to do it wants you to have a you know a fairly lengthy negotiation style black stabby game much in the vein that game of thrones is it's definitely representing the tv show and the books very well but uh, the factions weren't entirely balanced. <laughs> there are a couple like Baratheon that I swear had too much of a good start. Uh, Lannister, I swear, were like nigh on impossible to win with if you didn't know what you were doing. But it had that problem again of being a long game that if you got if you got off to a bad start, you were not going to win. And particularly as Lannister, I mean, you are surrounded by everybody who hates you. If you can't get your stuff out. The rich will get richer and you just won't be able to pull it back. And it's not fun to be there with like only a few forces while everybody else is doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And that puts me off it and that's why I dislike it. But everything else it was doing with the cards and, you know, the... I can't remember if it was like a closed bidding system or it was something that you did for the... Uh, like the turn order and that it was something you did with the crows i can't find a decent close-up picture of it unfortunately but maybe i can find one probably not but ah well but it's just basically you know there was a lot of stuff it did right sadly there was just a few things that it didn't do as well that i'm like yeah <laughs> right i've not i've not played this one it's actually on my on my shelf over there um i'm a huge game of thrones fan like massive um so i'm i want to get this out on an evening and just get make a whole night of it if it's a one-off play then so be it but i just want to say that I've, I've played it but um but yeah i have i have heard quite a few complaints about um you know the positions of, of some factions being sandwiched in between others that kind of thing but i think if I, if i go into the right mindset and think yeah this might go this might go completely you know belly up and it someone might get smashed but so be it it's game of thrones at the end of the day and how is the um, how is the card play work then? Is it a matter of um, kind of aha, I've got this card, therefore this happens? Um, I wasn't quite sure how how that works. Uh, to be honest, it has been years since I played it. I can't fully remember, but there were some cards that you could get that had your characters on there from your faction, and they did certain things represent the character, like they might be able to. You know, they might be able to let you do some maneuvering on the board or swing a vote somewhere. Like I know there was a couple of cards I saw in pictures where you've got this crow, you've got the sword, and you've got the iron throne. And depending on the, how high you were up these tracks, allowed you to do certain things in turn order or do things better. And so, you know, you might get Ned Stark or whatever, and he's got a sword on his. So, you know, if you play him at a time, it will help you in that respect. But I can't fully remember exactly how they worked. But they were just a nice, again, a thematic addition. You know, every faction did feel like it played differently. Like some wanted to just get out and conquer from the get-go. Some wanted to hold back a little bit. Some were kind of more prone to alliances and that. But being one of these tile of games, it was also fragile. Because if you get people who don't know what they're doing, it will just unbalance things like crazy. So it's another one of those deals where 
you know, I respect it if you can get the right group. I'm sure it's amazing, but you're just not going to commonly get that set up, really. And I certainly don't urge somebody to jump into a game where they've never played it with five people who have, because who we you are going to get wrecked. <laughs> And that's just not what I want. Yeah, I'm really no. eager to play it. I w yeah, just have just have fun with We're your good. first game, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think that's a... the plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an interesting experience, but ah well, fours. Okay, so my number four is a game that I know you like, Luke, because I've heard you talk about it a lot in the past. This is Five Tribes. Um, so Five oh, Tribes yeah. for me is objectively a good game. I cannot question that at all. It is yeah. a good you game. You don't like it though. All right. um, for me, okay. it became... For me, there was too many shifting variables all the time. Yeah, so everything is changing because it has this mind color system, but it's a, it's not like a linear mind color system. It's a grid. So yeah. when you do something, everything changes at once. It's basically a kaleidoscope of options um, at any time. <laughs> and for me it became a bit of work in order to make optimal moves. You know, if you really want to go down into the detail here and, you know, not just go with your gut reaction and just, you know, that looks good, I'll go for that. If you go beyond that, there's just too many variables and the AP can be absolutely crazy because you could be leaving opportunities for other players. So I think, I think you do need to go into this with the mindset of just going with a gut reaction rather than stopping analyzing the board every second which is going to change oh, every God, second yes <laughs> in order to you know in order to recalculate things and get you can min max everything for me um yeah you and for, and me as a very analyst an analytical person it's hard for me to switch that off at times <laughs> so i think you know what i could end up spending five minutes analyzing the board but then it's going to feel like work so I'll just go with my gut reaction. And if I go with my gut reaction, it feels like I'm not really invested. So it kind of it kind of struck a bit of a weird balance there for me. Um, and it became a matter of, you know, how long am I going to look at this board in order to get the maximum or the best move rather than again, just playing and having fun? Um, I also tend to not like or enjoy the Bruno Cathala element of his design where he always uses these kind of game-breaking powers. A lot of his games have this where you have a simple system but you can invest in these player characters, which will, again, mess with the game's rules. For me, I generally look at all the list of them and think, you know what, I, I can't be bothered. I'm having a hard enough time trying to work out the game here. I don't so want to learn. So you're talking change. about the gins then? Yeah, the gins. Yeah, the gins. Which, yeah, I, I couldn't really be bothered to think, you know, which ones are best for me? Which ones should I go for? What do they do again? All that kind of stuff. <laughs> But I have to admit, the game is very deterministic. You know, there is there is very little luck factor here. Um, and it's, a, again, a very well-designed game. And one of my favorite things about the game, actually, in fact, it was my favorite thing, is the, um, the way you can bid your points to go to go first in the next round. A cool mechanism. Um, I tend to like games that use a creative element when it comes to initiative and turn order. And I think Five Tribes might be the one of the best examples of how to do it, because you... You know, you're spending your money, I think, and your money is essentially your points. Yeah. So it's all about trying. You know, what's the what's the net gain here? Yes, I'm going to have to spend a fortune to go first, but there's a really strong move there that I want. Therefore, I'm willing to spend it. So again, I respect it in that in that way. But personally, I find it hard to get invested because if I want to get too invested, then it's going to be too much work. So yeah, it was mm. kind of a weird a weird kind of um, sitting for me in my own personal enjoyment. But yeah, objectively, yeah, very good game. I think actually when we were at Bacon earlier this year, I did remember playing this two player with somebody um, who like wanted to get it played. And it's like, oh yeah, I haven't brought five tribes out in ages. And uh, I can't remember who won. I think he won it, but uh, it was still like, oh yeah, five tribes, you get two of you to play it. It's such a joy because the, the turns are quicker. Four player with this, yes, I got to admit, you put anyone with AP anywhere near this and it's just like, oh, Christ, <laughs> it's not a long-term strategic game. You've got to look at what's on the board, but then you also need to not spend 20 minutes analyzing every single possibility because at the start of the game, most of the points will be quite similar with the options. It's just a case of what color you fancy. When you get later on, then yeah, the points for a move become a bit more interesting, but then there's also less options to think about. So it's got mm. that cool little cadence there. If anything, actually, my least favorite thing about it is actually the bidding for turn order, though. 
Okay. Because I find that most of the time people will just bid zero, one, or three or whatever, which is not really a massive differential in points. Nobody in their right mind is bidding fifteen or twenty or whatever the like the higher values are because that's just such a crippling amount of points. You will never earn that back with whatever move you do. So if you exclude them out of the bidding range, you're mainly just telling people whether they want to go first, second with like Oh, I'll bid three. I mean, five is usually the max I see people bid. If you're bidding eight, you need to have a really good reason. But most yeah. of the time, I don't think my move is worthy enough to go that first. So I usually just avoid it. It's but one of those things that I wouldn't have said no if they'd streamlined that out a little bit, particularly with four players worth. But like I say, it, it works and it is okay. cool that you are spending your VP to do it. That You know, that is something pretty sweet, but... Yeah, it, it got a yeah. bit bloated with expansions as well. I wasn't a massive fan of the purple tribe being added. Uh, the second expansion, the Sultans, is not bad, though, because you get these little mini objectives you can kind of grab during the game, which are quite cool for points. But the Honda say, yeah, you could just literally throw the base set of five tribes in front of me with two or three players max, and I'll have a good time. I've yet to try it solo, though. I've heard there's a variant, an official variant for it. But I have to try it out. I'm not okay. quite certain how that would work in the solo mode, but... <laughs> It was only get it, but yeah. I've, I've not played this in two player actually. I've not played it two player, so um, that might be so why I don't like it, it so with much. Four? Uh, I think I've played it three and four. Right, three not two. not too bad, but it can be a bit. But two, two's is the best one because, as I say, not too many people thinking about it. But also, you, I mean, you love the turn bidding system. In two player, you've got two each, two of the pawns. Yes. So you're having two turns each around. So you can technically set yourself up for double turns as well, which can be quite cool. So yeah. that bidding turn order thing actually becomes a little bit more prevalent with two players, I think, than with three or four. So it uh, you know, does a good, pretty good job. But yeah, I mean, that's the only thing that would tweak. Other than that, you're still playing the same man color game. Yeah. So if that doesn't float your boat, then it's not going to suddenly change. Okay. That makes sense. Four. Oh boy, have I talked about this one recently on uh, various top tens and everyone's giving me absolute grief over it. Look, I do like the game fine okay, it's just not a favourite of mine, particularly out of this publisher's games. You know, I liked it more at first, it showed some kinks in the armour and now I'm not... Now it's like a 6 out of 10 for me. I do think it's a little overrated, but I still give props that Paladins of the West Kingdom is still fun at times, you know. I still respect this game. It's not like, oh, I only like Architects and Viscounts and, you know, Raiders and Wayfarers and this one's garbage. No, it's just this one's... It's like some of the Lacerda games, you know. I can only rank them so well. This one is just one of my weaker links, you know. It's It does have some mechanisms I like. I like grabbing the townsfolk for different abilities. I like the options that you've got. I just wish that the game just represented its theme a little bit better and wasn't just simply a case of spamming two actions over and over again with these color meeples. It just, when it, it goes so far down the dry, almost felt like style gameplay that I'm like, okay, seriously, what? <laughs> Especially when I came from this after Architects, which I really love, but then this one was like, hmm, not quite as good. But as I say, still respect it. I mean, you could get me into a two-player game of this, free max maybe, but I know it's going to be a lengthy one. I've yet to try it with the expansion. I hear people say it fixes a few things. It's like, you know what? I would happily play this with the expansion because if it can be improved, I would gladly like to see if it can. Maybe it would bump me up. But as I say, I do still respect it. You know, I never sort of say, oh, you moron, why do you only, why do you like paladins and not the rest? It's like, cool beans, you like paladins, that's all good. <laughs> you know, t put down your pitchforks. <laughs> yeah, I've actually only played the first one of the uh, West Kingdom trilogy, the Architects. Yeah. Which I thought was quite nice, but I thought of all of them, this one would probably be the one that I would enjoy the most. It almost gives me like the um, the same vibe of something like Orleon. Um, is that yeah. the case? Yeah. Um... Yeah. Well, it's, it's a different game to all the on, but I mean they're both. I mean they're both super dry, but you know the bag building compared with the meeple stuff in this is very different. Okay, okay, um, yeah, but I'd, I'd give it a go. Um, how long were we talking of this one? You said it's quite long. It's how long is it? I mean these games will easily fetch between two to three hours when you're playing oh. it with like the most. It does drag on quite a bit because of just the sheer amount of stuff like going on in the sense it's definitely like one of the heavier ones there and i mean that works for some people uh not if you're colorblind certainly as toot says yeah if you're colorblind this okay. game will drive you up the wall but 
you know, I, I love Raiders. I love Architects. I love Viscounts. And I've even, it's actually in the bag downstairs. I need to get it unboxed. Um, I had some credit with, well, say, both of us, we support Kienda or something. And I recently grabbed Explorers of the North Sea from them because people had told me that that was actually a half decent game. And it's like, you know what? Fine. I want to try it. So I figured, sod it. Let's just buy it and like give it a shot at some point. So that's on my pile. But yeah, I you could get me to play Paladins. I'd just rather play the other ones that they've done. But if somebody wants to throw City of Crowns in front of me, whichever the expansion was, and just not make it like this picture, the four-player game, which is ridiculous, then by all means, I'd gladly try it. So, you know, people think that I hate this game. I don't. I just don't like it as much as the others. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'd, I'd give this one. I'll probably give it a go if I was pushed. Um, but yeah, the three-hour thing doesn't sound overly appealing to me, and I am quite badly colorblind, so maybe that is a, a big no-no. Oh, don't don't even try it if you're colorblind. This thing is like there is nothing in this game to alleviate colorblindness. You've got these different meeples; they're different colors, and this is your currency. The meeples are not screen printed. There's nothing on the board to say the green has a line through it and the blue has spots or anything. If you can't see colors and red, if red, green, blue, white, and black, you know, if those are going to cause you grief, then you need to stay the hell away from this. <laughs> Because it is okay. just mad. I'll take your advice. It, it, like I say, I, I, I was kind of shocked that it really did nothing to help the color blindness. But you know, not every, not every game has managed to do that. But yeah, if, whew, I was gonna say, I don't think I've seen anybody who's color blind try it. But I wouldn't want to test the water, shall we say? I think that would just go a bit far. <laughs> All right, top freeze. Okay, so yeah, my number three is The King is Dead. Um, this for me, uh, this was a really difficult one for me to put on the list because, and it's a difficult game for me to rate actually because I think the game is so well done. Um, but it became a bit too, well, I suppose the margins for error were so small. And oh God, yes. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it it's really is like a delicate balancing act in order to pull a victory off here. And I'm not sure if that level of kind of uncomfortableness was something that I, I enjoyed you know it was just it was definitely probably the, the one of the purest examples of games that I, I really appreciate it but my enjoyment of it isn't isn't quite there um yeah a little bit a little bit too stressful for me um and I think with each time I played it I found it decreasingly fun because I wanted to do better so it was it's a bit like you know something like chess again like I, I really appreciate the game mm. but I, I get no fun from it at all um but the actual concept of it, I think, is is so clever. Like the idea of literally puppeteering the three factions rather than actually, you know, yeah. taking ownership of one. You, you, you're not a specific color. You have a vested interest in all of them, um, and you need to be making sure that you you've invested in the in the winning faction at the end. I thought that was very cool, and I think maybe more games could could use this. You know, there's there's a lot of I think there's a lot of potential to use that style of gameplay where you are again manipulating things on the board rather than trying to destroy the others, I suppose. Um, Pax Bermuda is kind of like the heavy version of this in a sense, because that's got a similar puppeteering thing to it. What, what game's that? Pax Premier. Um, oh, okay. I've, I've not tried that games. one either. That one has a similar thing of you've got three factions in the go or something, and you're not technically in ownership of any of them. So, But that's right. like the heavier version of something like this. Okay. I th but I said that one of my favorite things about this game is the fact that you have what is it, like eight cards at the start of the game and you have to pace Barely yourself that, with yeah. those cards from start to finish. So every single one of those cards has to be used to the maximum benefit. You cannot waste them. Um, and I found pacing yourself is, is a really difficult thing to do because you could go, you know, you could spend them all in the first half of the game and they'd be completely at the mercy of everybody else for the second half Ooh, yeah. <laughs> or vice versa. So again, Every decision you make in this game is important. And again, make one mistake. And if your opponent doesn't, then they're going to win. So um, you really do have to be on the ball and you know be very alert on, on this game. So yeah, it was one that when I played it the first few times, I thought, this is this is genius. And then my desire to play it was just out the window. I just never pulled it off the shelf, N never even considered it. So um, quite, yeah, the, the kind of bell curve of me liking this one was a steep, you know, a steep um, you know, decline. <laughs> So, yeah, but I, I completely understand why so many people like it. I know a lot of people speak very highly of it. 
And to be honest, I don't have many, I don't, I've never really heard many people agree with me on what I say here. Um, I think people just find it fun, but I, I just found it a bit too a bit too stressful. So I mean, I can certainly understand people yeah, finding it three. stressful and not enjoying it. Because actually, to be honest, certain people kept talking highly of this, like saying it was like best ever or best a year. And I'm like, okay, come on, seriously, this tiny little game with a few cards and characters, you've got to be slightly playing this up a bit. And I still think that's the case. But I played it and was generally surprised by how much I did enjoy it. It's I think I rated it an eight. And it is still on my shelf on my Osprey square because I have to say everything you've mentioned that the game does in terms of this cleverness puppeteering thing the fact that every move is essential I can decide sort of part way through like okay am I trying to win by this faction in which case I want their cubes or can I cause France to come in and take over in which case am I winning on that one it's like oh the tightness of some of these scores and ends I've had and with certain people I know yeah. who have got into this as well it's just been a an enjoyable experience on that sense. My only slight grief is that for a game that should be relatively short, it's still short, but you put four people in this and any of them like AP like crazy, it's like, okay, come on. <laughs> you know, we need to get a move on with this. I know each move is paramount, but stop analyzing it too much, which yeah. is why actually with four people, I tend to only play that in team mode, um, which I okay. can't remember if you have to or not. But with that one, it's like, yeah, I mean, a two versus two thing helps a little with that. One on one is good little puppetry. I find this one with free is like fantastic though. Yeah. Free people. You don't have to mess around with the team rules. It's just short enough that it doesn't outstay its welcome and that, but you know, it's not like one person takes a faction, although sometimes that can happen, but with free, I don't know. There just seems to be a, there's enough interaction on the map without the game taking too long. And it just enters that lovely little sweet spot. But, uh, um, somebody mentioned like yeah. Brian Boro, which is the other game I quite like, the trick-taking area control version. Uh, I'm curious what the solo fan-made variant is for it, though, because I do like the game, but it doesn't hit the table that much. But I, just, I don't know. Fan-made variants I'm a little wary of. I know that Ark Nova had a really good one. I would admit I've played the, Ar the Arno variant. It is brilliant. But still, fan-made is usually a worrisome when I <laughs> come across these sort of things. But... If it gets to the table more, I guess I got to try a few of them. But Nada, if somebody doesn't like this game, I totally get it. Because at first, I was almost ready to hate it the first time I played it. Because I was so sick and tired of people saying it was their best game ever of the year and stuff. But it's like, oh no, actually, I quite like this one. And most stuff about this I was game should actually. Reverse... Karen? So I was going to say, I was almost in the reverse camp. Because on paper, I should love this mm. game. I, I love. I love streamlined games where there's no fat or bloat on it whatsoever. Um, so it's yeah, like, I, I yeah. was expecting to really like it. Um, but I actually, I kind of ended up replacing this with um, like Condottier. I think I prefer Condottier in every respect to oh, The Con King is Dead. Oh, it's Con probably what I wanted from The King is Dead. Yeah, Condottier or so. I don't know. The, I don't know how it's meant to be pronounced, but yeah, <laughs> I, I know that one. Um, that, one's, that one's fine. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. Takes a little bit longer. This one on paper was kind of like to say that, oh, nah, Luke, I mean, you hated Eight Minute Empire. This is basically, you know, that with some extra sort of cleverness thrown in or something. You're probably not going to like it either. And it was just, it surprised me that I played it and thought, oh, wow. Because a lot of people sort of play it and don't quite get what they're doing for the first few turns, which is a bit of a problem. Like you end up in a situation where, you know, every turn is critical and yeah. then the... But then the first couple of turns, they don't know what they're doing with it. But as soon as their minds click and they start twigging, oh, you know, that's always quite fun to see. <laughs> and yeah. certainly that happened to me in my first games. I'm like, I don't know if what I'm doing is right, but ooh. <laughs> and then you start noticing yeah. the little tricks you can pull. Yeah, this All is right. definitely one of those petty drop style games. Mm. Right, not going to talk very much about my number three because probably for the first time on any of these collaboration lists and certainly for the first time on any list that dan and i are doing this actually crossover um with a game that you know i generally i'm not a fan of either but still got to give respect for mainly the same reasons yeah why does this massive sci-fi epic game have to be three hours i don't guess <laughs> like, you know i i like the theme of it the various factions and some of the stuff in it is good there is a lot of good elements to this i think the dice chucking is not one of its best features. I wish the combat system was a bit more deterministic, particularly when a lot of the games basically just turn into this. 
which is everybody guns for the middle Mechatol Rex and then just has a massive cluster battle there. And it's like, I wish there was maybe a bit more decorum to this sci-fi epic than just simply everybody going, like Demolition Derby. It's like, what? <laughs> kind of weird. But I usually am one of the people sitting at the back. I mean, yellow and blue here. They're, they're sitting on their back systems and just teching up and stuff. That's me in this game. You know, I just want cool technologies and cool point stuff. You know, I'm playing the Euro version of this, whereas everybody else is trying to kill each other in the middle. But, man, I would enjoy it more if it was just shorter. You know, give me Empires of the Void 2, and that gives me, like, two hours, you know, of good space fun with a bit of combat and a bit of teching and stuff like that. This one just doesn't need to be six hours. But, you know... I give it respect for the same reasons you said. It gives you exactly what it set out to do. Yeah, um, absolutely. And as you said, when I, I remember playing this one and um, everybody was kind of going for the, again, just smashing each other. And, um, you know, me being the kind of Eurogamer I am, I think I had like some kind of trading faction and I was getting all my points from, you know, just peacefully existing. And oh, then the somebody li comes Yeah, the Lions. Yeah. The Lions, yeah, I was the Lions. And somebody just came and absolutely obliterated me. And I, you know, I didn't provoke them at all. And I was like, oh, okay, mm. well, I've lost interest now. <laughs> that is the thing. Yeah, somebody can just come along and be a giant dick to you. I mean, you know, playing Space Aslan is, you know, fun for a bit until someone does that. At least with the tech. I mean, I like playing in universities because then you just play tech strategy for the whole thing. And if somebody does come near you and it's like, well, I got better guns than you. I just need more ships, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's not too bad in that respect. I don't know where, where someone said three hours because... Yeah, quickest I've seen this go is like five, six or whatever. It's like maybe there was a four hour once of the fourth edition, but that was three people who knew exactly, three, no, not three, like four people who knew exactly what they were doing. So yeah, this is not something that is short in any respect, but yeah, similar reasons to what you said. There's a comment here I just want to come across here though. Uh, where's the, where was it a second ago? King is dead. Did your dislikes have anything to do with yellow losing too often? I never noticed anything with faction colors losing often, because at the end of the day, everybody's got the same cards, and they start in three similar locations. I've seen no real disparity. No, I don't think so. I, maybe, maybe I've mentioned on a video before that I always play yellow. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, you don't play a color in, um, in King is no, Dead. No, I know. But I mean, generally... All right. Uh, kind of, I don't care. Never noticed that. No, I mean, the factions have done fine. I mean, at the end of the day, you want a spread of the factions, depending on which win condition you get. But no, I don't think there's anything particular I think it's with because a faction doing better. Maybe because Yellow's England. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> maybe, but who knows? I was like, no, I can't start over. <laughs> We're trying to make the most of his internet while it still lasts. So, <laughs> so we don't want to strain it yes. too much. Uh, but yeah. Similar reasons. Just wish it was wish it was shorter, but I still give it props because I've had some fun times with it. And okay, so my joke. number two is a game that <laughs> definitely um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My number two is a game that blew up um a couple of years ago. Massively popular. I think it's rated extremely highly on on the. BGG rankings. Uh, this is The Crew. Um, cooperative. Why is everyone hating on The Crew? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't hate it. It's, it's, well, True. I don't, I don't You're better than myself, Brandon in that respect. Yeah. I give it, I give it respect. <laughs> yeah, I give it respect. Um, so for me, I, I got very little satisfaction from winning these scenarios. I, I didn't really find compelling to go to the next one and try, oh, now, now we've got this extra rule going on and I got, we've got to try beat this one. And again, once I'd once I'd understood the game and understand how it works, I didn't really feel the need to progress through, through you know through the whole list of thirty scenarios, or whatever. I kind of felt like I'd seen what it had to offer, um, and I didn't really like that idea of um, you know let's try this mission. Oh, we got it wrong. Let's try it again. Oh, we got it wrong again. But we did a little bit better. Let's try it again, and we then we we've sussed it. So I don't really like that kind of start and stop style gameplay of trying to beat the next the next mission. And something, whenever I've kind I've of never played, I have before, not played thirty missions of this though. God blimey, I'm impressed. <laughs> oh no, no, I, I haven't. I know like, no. there's that like many. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the things that most people say is when I, um, you know, if I mention I don't like this game, is that they think, oh, you know, you just don't get it. You know, you don't, you don't get it. I was like, I do get it. I just don't find any fun from it. 
Um, I, I will say no. now, I am sick and tired of people saying that. Okay, that excuse. Because I got the same problems when I ragged on Scout the other day or something. Frankly, know this. If your excuse or counter-argument is they don't get it, your argument is invalidated at that point. All right, that is such a cheap get-out clause to say, ooh, if someone doesn't get it, therefore they don't, you know, therefore they hate the game. It's like, you can hate a game and still understand its intricacies, okay? It just, I hate that used as a cop-out. Right, sorry, yeah. rant over. <laughs> no, no, I, I completely get it. But I said, I, I understand how nuanced the game is. I really do. I think it's a very well-designed game. Like, some of the, um, like, again, like, almost, like, limited communication methods you have to do which you have to think outside the box you can be very clever with it and stuff like that i completely understand that and i understand why people like excuse me why people like that element of the gameplay you know, very small margins of um and very good very sophisticated plays you can make um and i also think the actual difficulty arc is, is well paced you know you do start off very mm. basic just a little bit extra in the next round i think it's very well spread out to keep you engaged but yeah, ultimately, that that kind of dopamine hit from com completing a mission wasn't really there for me. I, I didn't really um, again, feel the need to to progress much further with it. And get in, I think this game came out in what 2019, 2018, something like that. Something like 2019, and yeah. To bring out to bring out a game that is truly a fresh concept and unique, you know, full props because this game did mm. really it it was groundbreaking. You know, there was nothing else that mm. did this. Uh, you know, a cooperative trick-taking game and you know, full respect for that. And it pulled it off to a very high standard. But yeah, I think for me in general, trick-taking is something that doesn't resonate with me. Um, but yeah, I can objectively, objectively see that this game is brilliantly designed, but it's just not one for me. Right I'm quite impressed somebody's doing remote play with this, actually. That's quite a <laughs> cool way of doing it. Um, yeah, I, as I say, I still really enjoy this. Trick-taking is just a mechanic that i've seen a resurgence in with me playing it like i now want to try so many different trick taking games because i i don't know i always liked them but lately i've just played a bunch more and it's just like yeah there's maybe it's because i am trying to veer away from the stupidly long games a bit like you are and there's something that i just appreciate now about just like a nice simple card game that i can just get out and still have some thinkiness with and this yeah. is kind of like one of those deals like you know five minutes we can put out a game you know we'll rinse repeat if we to try and up the difficulty or beat the current mission, but each decision I'm making isn't just guessing. Unlike the mind, which I can't stand, this one at least has, you know, proper guessing. You know, there's a reason, an educated reason why I'm picking a card for the most part. Sometimes you're just chucking a card in, but if somebody plays a card, I'm thinking about why they would play it, and there are reasons why they would, providing mm -hmm. they understand what they're doing. So it's, yeah, it went mad. And what you said about, the some doing something new in this day and age somebody asked me the other day if uh i like gave extra points just because it was brand new or something like that for a review and it's like it's not that it gets extra points per se but it certainly does get more props or credit like or entry from me because as you say it's so hard to do something fresh and new that you could make a fresh idea and it it completely falls apart, you know. Yeah. Just look at Pendulum from Snowmire for a kickoff, but uh, the oh, come on, fresh idea and that crashed and burned. But the at least it was something different. This one was something different, and it just you know, sign home would be really well. But it could have crashed and burned as well. It could have just been a complete failed thing. But I would have still given it props for like you know what you tried something different. But when, but when a game succeeds while doing something different, then yeah, perhaps it does score a little bit extra because it took more risks you know give me a generic point salad euro beige trading in the med you could make it passable but frankly it's like well yeah but then so did half a million others before you you know you haven't you've made a credible game that stands on its own two feet but you haven't gone to the next level yeah yeah to break through yeah to break through something new is very rare and this game certainly did it i mean i don't know how many copies this has sold now but and again it's, it's a very nuanced game and for that, that to click with people and to people to to get it um it goes to show it is is a quality design it really is a quality design mm, that. yep it does the job 
We're at two. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about this because we've actually had the second crossover. Or, like, you'd, somehow we've managed to actually cross over on these lists. I don't know how that's possible, but, uh, yeah, agreement. Root. You know, I still like the game sort of fine. I mean, it's, you know, six, maybe it's closer to a five now or something. It's an average game for me. I certainly don't buzz about it as much as other people do. And it's not necessarily the design of the game, because I do agree with you. I think this is a cool idea. I think it's kind of, in a way, a fresh idea. And the card... I wish the card play was a bit more interesting in it. It's more the difference in the factions that's more interesting. I just wish I didn't have to have to teach four separate games every time I play the thing. <laughs> so, you know, people will bring it out and it's like, oh, Luke, are you interested in this? And it's like, right, well, I've got to resume how I play this particular faction, but then he knows exactly what he's doing with every faction. And these two have never seen it before, so I'm going to have to wait while they teach four separate games again. And it just becomes completely impractical. Hence, the app, for me, has killed it, because I could just bung, you know... I don't really play the app much anymore, but I did have a couple of videos where I did try to solo stream those, and they were... It was good fun, but they actually taught me how to play the game in a good way. So honestly, if, if people want to learn this game before they're going to play it with somebody, I would almost just give them five bucks and tell them to buy the app. Because <laughs> that's actually a better teaching tool than someone else doing it. Uh, and then you add more factions in and that just makes it even even worse in a sense. But yeah, it it does the job. I mean, it's the same reason I never bothered playing Merchant's Code. Did you ever try that one? No, same reason. I I, mm. I look for reasons not to pick up games now. You know, I look for reasons not to <laughs> yeah, pick them up. It works. And when I when I see that, I'm like, no, I can automatically bypass that without even looking at it. Yeah, and it's the same with Merchant Code. It's like, look, it may be a fun game, but I'm not teaching four separate things to people every time I bring it out to the table. It's not practical. I I do have a regular group of four that I can play games with, but they're not massive root fans themselves and that, and even then we want to play different games we don't want to play the same thing all the time but i go to game clubs i have to play with different people fairly regularly you know there's some rinse repeat but never like the same dedicated group week after week games like root just don't work and i do see it played every now and again at my portsmouth group but again i notice that when they're doing it it's like right they're probably going to have a good time i'm already a third of the way through my game and it's like they haven't finished teaching yet. It's like, ah, it's like, this is going to get kind of ridiculous. But yeah, same reasons you said, Root, just they're good. I respect it. Does it need to be quite so high on BGG? Hell no. But, <laughs> you know, at least I can say, look, I'm just not the audience. It's a, I'd like to say it's a niche audience, but it's still pretty popular. But I just don't know where everybody else is getting these regular groups easily. But I guess that's just me. All right. Well, unless you've, Unless you've got the exact same number one, I can tell you that we're not crossing over again, so uh, <laughs> we're definitely going to have something different for the ones. Yeah, we've definitely not got the same number one, because my number one is Spirit Island. Um, oh boy! <laughs> yeah. Pitch so Spirit Island. Yeah. Spirit Island for me... Um, First off, I have to kind of put a caveat on this thing. I've kind of noticed over the last maybe couple of years that I've never really clicked with a co-op game. And it's something quite obvious, but when I come to look at my collection, I don't think I've got any that's above a, a party game that's co-op. To be fair, so... I'm not surprised by that, because when I think of the games that I know you tend to like, and particular designers, and that they're not known for co-ops. No, no, that's true. I, I just, yeah, even ones that I have liked, I've kind of gone off them pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, they seem to have a short shelf life for me. Um, but Spirit Island, um, much, no, actually, maybe in a different dimension. It's it's kind of one of those games where it's you can you can very meticulously plan things with this slow and fast powered thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's a real true brain burner, and it's one of those things where if you want to min max everything you are going to have to put work in. And when games start venturing on feeling like work to me, that is when I start to lose interest and, again, I lose that, that fun factor. Um, I also thought, again, if you do want to, again, min-max everything, then the game can take quite long. Um, yeah. <laughs> and But, yeah, just, despite that, 
I think that the game is phenomenal. I think the design here is unbelievably clever. Um, I love the level of control you can have. I love the synergy between the different um, spirits and the way they can play off each other, you know, push things around the board, you know, playing it, you know, literally manipulating the board to utilize the strength of all these different things. Um, yeah, honestly, I think the level of detail, the level of attention and control you can have in this game is truly uh, mind blowing. And it's, you know, it's a very advanced game for pretty, a pretty simple framework, actually. It's not terribly, mm. um, no, it's not terribly complex in the rules, but the gameplay is rich and, you know, really dense. Um, but the thing, yeah, the yeah it's one of those games not... where I just thought, it's not the best written rule book, but when you boil it down, especially if you haven't thrown branch and claw and all ones in it, there's not a huge amount of rules. It's just a lot of stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. But that that fast and slow powered thing was really, I don't know, it messed with my head because when you have to bear in mind that I'm going to do this, but by the time this happens, that's already happened. But then your powers does this and when I when I have to kind of especially communicate with somebody else in mapping that out, it's um you know it, it became too much and I was thinking you know what just do your thing I'll do my thing and that's not how you get the most from the game so I actually think I preferred playing this game solo than I did playing with somebody else by quite a big margin mm. actually and and the the kind of um the spirits that suited my game style the most and that I preferred were the ones where you could literally um you know just generally go and smash the bad guys the ones that are a bit more in your face i kind of got right. on with them a bit better so i think you probably like the three ones you probably not necessarily guy, those you certainly like the lightning bird yeah because you get to ignore the fact that anything is slow and you are basically zapping everything so that's kind of a thing yeah um, yeah so th the game i enjoyed the most was that one when i played with that one but when i started introducing the other ones and particularly when playing with somebody else and they're throwing their two cents in as well i just thought it was way too much work for me so again <laughs> probably one of the most difficult games i've ever had to put on a scale from one to ten because <laughs> yeah. taking myself out of the equation this is like 10 with my own enjoyment into it it's you know definitely significant significantly lower than that and i have no desire to go and play it anymore so yeah this was the game that first sprung into my mind when i thought of this list um but yeah i mean i can completely understand if you like co-op games this one could easily be your best game of all time or your favorite game and i cannot <laughs> throw any shade on that it certainly has been on my lot but yeah i mean uh, i would be the first to say that it's not for everybody <laughs> if somebody no. comes away not liking this it's you know there are so many reasons where they could uh like have problems with this it is stupidly dense it definitely isn't is i must admit 90 percent of the time i will play the solo rather than with other players as well because yes i do love co-ops and and i certainly had some really fun two-player games and some free players of this with people who know what they're doing i certainly don't like to throw in randoms in a multiplayer experience but yeah you get the right people or if i'm just bringing this out solo it's like man i can have so much fun with the thinginess and the theme in this game and it took me so long to get back into it as well a one bad teach of a long three hour free player game put me off it for years until finally i was determined to give it another shot and then played it with people that i knew locally who knew what they were doing i could teach it better it's like dang why did i leave this out for ages it's like i need to go back <laughs> but yeah. i'd actually be really um really fascinated to play this with somebody who did know what they were doing because i think i'd be quite in awe and seeing them how they how they pulled this off because it's way above my head I, i'm terrible at it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I could, I could do reasonable at it, but even then, there's a cap at the difficulty of those scenarios where I'm like, oh, crap, yeah, I can't beat this level. You know, it requires an entirely new level of style of play. But, you know, then I play those harder ones with the people who I do know that I play this religiously, and it's like, yeah, so sweet. Uh, interesting at that. Did I promise to do a spirit ranking video? I thought I did. I have a feeling somewhere on my live stream videos, if you look at my backlog... There was a time when I did do a tier ranking list of all the spirits because One Pit Wonder did it and I decided to follow suit. So I'm pretty certain I've done that already. Have a look through all my um, live videos on my channel or something. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Um, it's got a big picture of one of the cards like with spirits on it. So it should be pretty easy to spot. Um, but man, yeah, you know, 
a lot of people certainly in the chat do like it, but uh, Shane's on your side. Shane really doesn't like this one by the sound of it. Although, bear in mind, <laughs> we may not like him, but we are still respecting them, so we're not necessarily going oh. down that route. Um, yeah. Do we want to review on Dark Souls? No, because frankly, well, I played it once and it's rubbish. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. It, the, those games are not designed that well but that way they look cool but their design is not great <laughs> uh, was it? yep tried it. definitely have done the spirit ranking video pretty certain so it was quite a lengthy one I remember but by all means check that out already but yeah I, I totally get this one and must admit uh, I'm not surprised you've nah, actually nah this doesn't surprise me yeah I mean you're not normally into the co-ops and that and I suppose, like I say, theme is not a massive deal. So that one sort of bounces off. So I'm not quite, I'm not surprised that you bounced off this one. Yeah, it works. It's strange because when I played it the first time, I was I was quite impressed. I, I enjoyed it. I think I even rated it maybe seven and a half. But again, my desire as times by, it's just sunk, sunk, sunk. And I don't want to go back to it. <laughs> That's right. Up. All right. Well, I mean, let's see. You, you picked on the daddy there. Well, I must admit, I'm doing kind of similar, actually, because this one... I do got to give it props. Um, I can still get enjoyment from this game quite a bit. In fact, there's only really two aspects of it that put me off wanting to play this. And it's not even including the fact that some games have come out that have replaced this for me. You know, I liked it more when it first came out. I, you know, probably turned off it a bit then. But we've, we owe Rosenberg a lot for a lot of his games. But you have to give props to the mother of all his Rosenberg farming games, the original Agricola. Most of my problem that I have with this game is the fact that it's too punishing. You know, I've got to do a bit of everything or lose a million points. I have to get children, otherwise I will lose this game flat out. Yeah, you know, there's those sort of things irk me with this, but it's still a resource management farming game. It's still a type of Euro that I really enjoy and a theme that I really like. I like farming themes. I think they. I think it's a fun mechanic. You know, gravi you know, granted, I wish it looked a bit better than just tiles and discs and stuff, but I like to have my farm full of animals and decide if I'm growing corn in that. It's tight worker placement. I do like that sort of thing. You know, it works, works for me on that. But much like you say, feed your people the game. Caverna and Fields of Isle need you to feed your people. It's doable, though. You have to account for it, but you shouldn't get killed for it. This one, on the other hand, does kill you stone dead the second that you try to not feed your people. Because you'll either lose points or you barely manage to feed anybody. I don't... I don't get it. Um, props... Uh, I suppose what is the dictionary definition of props? I mean, it's, it's generally... I, I suppose it's exactly it's what like, this list is. I give it respect. <laughs> Yeah, I give yeah. it credit. It's it's weird. It's a weird slang word. I don't think it's actually a shortened word. I think it's just some kind of slang that some of us say. Oh, I like this. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that looks a bit more uh, realistic. But we, when you mentioned Feast of Odin, you mentioned the card system in that. I like the card system in this for the most part. I love the fact that the occupations are a bit more interesting in this, and you grab a bunch at the start. I just wish that they were more balanced and you know, that I could get more of them. It wasn't just the six or seven or something I have at the start and I have to make do with those. So it, it's like I say, there was a few things with it that put me off liking it. And most of it is down to that punishing nature. I don't like the idea I need a bit of everything or I lose a ton of points. Caverna solved that problem for me, which is why I like, I love these different ways that people have pimped out this game. But, uh, <laughs> which is kind of crazy and it certainly is a bit of a table hog mess compared to even something like caverna and that but yeah caverna just gives me it gives me the flexibility to have fun with the farming theme and decide how i want to build my farm and so does fields of Isle in that respect this one is forcing me down a particular path of how to do it and by the end of the game i'm like well i focused mostly on sheep farming i've capped out on points because you can't have more than a certain amount of each thing to score and because I didn't grab a single pumpkin or a single pig, I lose, you know, four or five points and the game. Those things just irked me, hence this one got replaced. But yeah, if I didn't have Agricola, I didn't I wouldn't have any of these other really good farming based Euros, because this is what spawned them all. Yeah, I mean this this game was certainly um uh you know influential on you know the landscape of, of Euro games. Um and another guilty admission, I've never played it. I've never played it. I think maybe because You've I played, played this. 
No, I've never played it. I was expecting this to be one of your like love childs or something. <laughs> no, not at all. Because I actually played La Havre, you know, quite a while ago. And for me, even the feeding the people in that one was way too much. I was spending way too much of my attention of the game, just filling a quota before I could actually do what I wanted to do. And if that's, it was even even more intense in this game, then I'm, my interest is very low. And I think if I want to try one of them, I will go straight to Caverna rather than trying this one first. So That's weird, because um, I would yeah, have thought will, this uh, one would be more up your street because it's more tight and restrictive and that. I, I like it to a point, but when when you're debilitated by being so restrictive, I, I don't really like that. So none of, none of the games mm. I, I really love are that punishing. I mean, there are the odd, odd exception, but... Not when, again, when something you, you have to do, you know, you're forced to do something. Um, otherwise, you're going to be punished so badly. I don't really, yeah, I don't really see the appeal of that when there's so much else you want to do and you just haven't got the, you know, the bandwidth to do it. So, yeah, I'm not <laughs> the sure. Irony, the irony of you to... saying that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but it... Yeah, I'm surprised actually, because I thought this would have been something that would have been on your shelf somewhere, and like you would have been one of the ones that goes, "Oh, Agricola for the win, not Caverna or something." But uh, I mean, near the end of the day, Fields of Isle is still my favourite because of that. It's even more open with what choices you have. It's just kind of ridiculous, and it's kind of weird. I come from the West Country. I'm not a farmer, but the farming theme is just a bit more interesting. Uh, because I mean, whoopee, Industrial Revolution, coal, iron, make make metal steel or whatever and make engines. I don't care. Yeah, that, that sort of stuff doesn't interest me at all. But then nor does the trading in the med silk and gold and and a lot of these other hash, rehashed themes that are used with resource management, even like medieval stuff. I mean, as much as I like Architects of the West Kingdom, at the end of the day, it's getting stone brick or whatever and building the cathedral. That's not an interesting theme. But I just think the farming is a fun theme, <laughs> you know, but who doesn't like animals and, you know, who doesn't want, who doesn't sort of get a good feeling when they're just building paddocks of sheep and cows and stuff. I don't know. It's just something about it, especially when it's you creating your own board. It's just a bit more appealing in that sense. But I say it, it's not, you know, if we didn't have Agricola, I wouldn't have Caverna or Fields of Isle. I much prefer those two and to a, another extent Feast of Odin. Somebody mentioned Halito earlier. I'm not the big fan of that one, actually. Halito was incredibly swingy with those cards. And they did mention that a similar thing. Uh, you've got that house that you move along or something in order to score points. You have to do that. Like, that's the be-all or end-all right. of the game. So that one didn't work with me as much on there. There was a question earlier that I was trying to find. Oh, no. Yeah, somebody had mentioned... Um, the Caverna of Frantic Fiends. I've got it over there and I have played it, including with some people who are big Caverna fans. And we weren't... They they didn't dislike it as much as I did, but I wasn't a fan. It, it literally does what he just said there. It gives Caverna the Agricola viciousness, which I don't want. <laughs> I play Caverna to not have the Agricola viciousness. The Frantic Fiends expansion throws in like orcs you've got to defend from and stuff like that. But it basically tightens the game and makes it harder to feed people and do what you want. It's like, well, yeah, but that's not what I wanted to play Caverna for. So your expansion has literally, you know, taken the game I love for this reason and tried to make it more like the game I didn't want. And on top of that, it says you can't play it with the first expansion, Forgotten Folk, which is the brilliant expansion for it. So you're like, you're not only making it like a game I don't want it to make it like, but you're also disregarding the best expansions. So it was like, fail. It was like, so to fail. Yeah. So it's a matter of time, I'm sure, before I get to try um, Caverna. But yeah, I think Agricola is one that I'm just going to accept that it's not going to be for me. But hey, I could be wrong. It could be one of those ones that I'm going expecting not to like and end up liking it. But I've yet to I feel that way about any Rosenberg game, sadly. Or at least the heavier ones. <laughs> Over that. Is that. Farming probably is my blood, whatever. I like cider and I'm from the West Country. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in there somewhere. But I'm, I don't recall anyone in my family tree being a herd of farmers. So... I think it's just that I would find it more interesting if I was going to do anything like that. I've never played Ascension Tactics. I didn't even realize it was a tactics version of it. I thought it was just a card deck builder. But, you know, it's a new one on that. Uh, right. Honorable mentions before we wrap on in there. Did you have any others that didn't make your list? I did. I, I jotted a few down. There was there was some more. Um, I, mentioned, I wrote down Champions of Midgard. Um, I thought that was 
I, I gave it respect because it does kind of give that hybrid effect of the Euro nature with the dice rolling. But for me, again, it's more roll to resolve, which I tend not to like. Yeah. Preferred Similar. it slightly more. Yeah, but, Valhalla, yeah, Valhalla and something else. I've not played it with the expansions. At some point, I would like to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought that was, that was okay. Um, Lord of the Rings, The Confrontation. I don't know if you've played that one, Luke. It's I haven't, but I know a of it. Very yeah, like intense, the... almost like Stratego. Stratego, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought the game was really well done, but again, the the margins for error were just a bit too a bit too small for me. One mistake, you, you're done for. Um, Gloomhaven. I thought the card system was good, but the rest of it was just a bit generic for me. Nah, um, Captain never. Sonar, <laughs> Over it. very innovative. That um, made sure fresh list. design. Yeah. Maybe sure there's uh, yeah, people I know play it and they like my... it, but I'm just not, I'm not a real time fan, and it just it devolves into just I don't know. It's one of those chaos games that I just can't really bring myself yeah. to that level, especially when out of the four stations that you've got, I only want to play one cartographer. If I'm not playing a cartographer, I won't get any enjoyment out of Sonar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a bit too chaotic, as you said. Some parts of the game more interesting than others. Um, Unmatched was another one, and also um, Sobek, the new two-player one. Really, you didn't like that I one. Where's that, nice... that one? It was a little bit too, um, a little bit too abstract for me. I thought it was quite nicely done. Can't seem to spot it. Maybe it's downstairs. But yeah, I remember reviewing that one recently. I quite enjoyed that one. Uh, that was a. I mean, saying yeah. that though, I must admit I'm certainly more of a Bruno Cafala fan in that terms of her. Uh, talisman uh no <laughs> i mean it it's dated it's it's a roll and move game that's way 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 too long i'm sure it was a good laugh back in 1975 or whenever it first came out or something but you know it's not something that i can respect anymore because i would never want to play it now um say so thanks to you got it uh what else do i have on mine so uh oop. i'm looking at a different list i say uh, Coffee Trader, oh, yeah, the one that I played recently at um, Gridcon. Uh, wasn't as fan. I wasn't a big fan of that one. Uh, my two mates really liked it. I wanted more theme out of my coffee game, and it doesn't really have a lot of that. It's mostly just leveling up tracks and spending off those tracks. One of the tracks, I don't even know what it's called. It's literally just on the right side of your player board, and you level it up in some weird arbitrary mechanical way. That doesn't make any formatic sense whatsoever. So like, I don't even know what they called the track. That's how sort of dry it was. Um, but it almost made my 10, but I was just like, yeah, but at the end of the day, the more I think about it, the less I respect it. So it's kind of like, especially for that 90 pound price point, because I think that's a oh, little yeah. bit ridiculous. Uh, Lahav, we did mention that one briefly earlier. I do like, I didn't want to put that on though, because I don't think I dislike Lahav. I do like Lahav. The problem is, there came a point where somebody I knew uh, played, we, we played the Harv, and he showed me, like, how, well, the way he played it and how he won it revealed the exploit in the game, which now puts me off wanting to ever play it unless you house rule it out. He basically right. does the classic thing of, I don't care what loans I get, because at the end of the day, the acceleration you get from those loans just propels you into the, the points, and you just buy them off at the end you know, nice and easy because interest right. and debt doesn't work properly in the in the game from a finance standpoint. As soon as that happened, it put me off the game from that point forward. But I would play it again if somebody house ruled it to say that interest charged per loan and not all together because, well, A, that's how debt works and B, it kills that exploit stone dead. But yeah, it almost made the list as a, on that result. You already mentioned Captain Sonar. Cult Express, I thought that was being a bit too harsh. I mean, it's it's a luck fest. It's light. It's for younger people. I, I thought that'd be a bit harsh putting on. Galaxy Trucker, I don't think I respect that one enough. Uh, it's it's okay, but it's just a bit, as like I say, the time stuff I'm not a massive fan of. I thought I suppose the, mo the only other semi-serious one was probably Smartphone Inc. Um, okay. You know, I have I have played both of those and Mobile Markets. I think Mobile Markets is slightly better, but... I don't know. I, just, I wanted, again, more theme out of it, and I just didn't get any theme from it. It just like, all right, this is a simple economic game through and through. You know, 
beat someone out of the market. Turn order is a big deal, which I'm never as big a fan when turn order plays such a huge part over everything else. But I did at least so, you know what? It's simple. It plays five players, which is not easily doable. It's not a complicated game. It's just a genre that I'm not massively into, and I just wanted a bit more theme out of it. But, you know, the thing with the little puzzle thing is odd, but it's a cool little puzzle to do. So there was yeah. enough props I could give it to go... Huh, I was contemplating that for the list. Um, yeah, I like that one. As I said, we not got any others in there. The Serta games, uh, yeah, I can see that. You know, <laughs> they're, they're giant, they're heavy, and I mean, I've got some people I know who are raving about Weather Machine at the moment, and I've played it, it's fine, but I mean, all those Lacerdas I prefer, you know, to Weather Machine, it... But these ones have actually got theme. Weather Machine has no theme in it whatsoever. And it just feels like another Lacerda game in a sense. Again, it's like this thing that I want something fresh. So I can give Weather Machine respect. But yeah, I just can't see the amazement factor of it as much. Uh, okay. Can't see any others. Nobody else. Uh, Destinies. Uh, I did review Destinies. I suppose that could have maybe made the list because I can kind of respect it in a sense. It does a story-based game. It does app. The app integration's good. The rules are straightforward. I just wish the story was a bit more interesting and the whole, they didn't do competitive. The whole, like, oh, we're going to make this a competitive story-based game just doesn't work. I'm obviously no. guessing you've never even wanted to go near it, but... <laughs> No, no, I didn't didn't pique my interest at all. Again, I, anything <laughs> campaign or story based, I tend to just automatically dismiss. Yeah, I mean, this one didn't have so much a campaign. I think they were scenario based, right? But they were technically story based, and I didn't mind the story, the story thing. But it's just like, nah, I just I couldn't. Um, it the the idea that you were racing each other to get through your story quicker doesn't make much dramatic sense. But it also was just incredibly luck based. You know, I, did I go in the right direction from the start? No? Well, that sucks. Oh, you went to the exact church you need to go to. Well, great. I mean, it, it, even Solo, I just didn't... It, Solo puts you on a time trial that forces you to get everything right, otherwise you lose. And it's just like, no, Time Stories had problems when it did that. I don't need this to Destinies as well. Uh, Tony's been trying to... Okay. Well, first of all, Lena, I already mentioned Game of Thrones earlier, so yep, that's definitely a thing. Caesar... I can only imagine you have to verify. Hang on, because this is on. Right. Do you mean this Caesar? Uh, oh, well, there's a lot of them. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> where's the one that I rated? Oh, that one. It'll be the Palo Mori one. Probably, yeah, because I only gave that a five. Uh, 20 minute. Yeah. <laughs> this one. I don't know. Could I? I? I mean, I don't like it. I certainly didn't like it, and I got a lot of flack for it. Um, yeah. Again, God, the amount of people on this who say oh, he doesn't get it. It's like, oh, come on. Um, yeah, at which point, delete comment because I'm just getting sick of it. But the I don't know. Do I respect it? It's not bad, I guess. I guess it. I like this one. It would never make it. It would never make a top ten. I guess. I mean, it. It could be a top twenty, maybe. Because I can see the push and pull two player aspect of it. I didn't like playing it solo. I think it worked better as a two player. But the problem is the game was just so forgettable for me. Like literally, it was like a whole. It was the epitome of a whole bunch of nothing. You know, I couldn't get wild up over it, but I also couldn't get excited about it either. It just left no impact. So right. it's hard to tell if I respect it or not because I can't generate enough emotion for it. It just exists and it's there. Whatever, if you like it, great. But it just didn't work for it. <laughs> Fair enough. I really like that one. I think it's very clever. That that doesn't surprise me on that one. Perhaps perhaps it could be. Perhaps it could be a top twenty. I just I don't think it would be quite top ten worthy. But uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was a bad design per se. It was just not for me. So yeah, that could work. Um, Dune was already mentioned. Yes, I already did that one. I can't think of. Nope. Doesn't look like as many others. Okay, just over two hours. I think that's a good time to short things off. So, by all means, remember everybody supports all creators. So, get on to Dan's channel. I think I can still get it on the screen. There you go. <laughs> go find it. Lots of stuff. And somebody mentioned earlier that 
it's good having us two on on the on the basis that we do have very different tastes. That's half the point, <laughs> because if it was just people who agreed with me all the time, it wouldn't make sense. But even, I mean, to be honest, we've actually agreed more on this list than we had before because of a couple of crossovers and the fact that even... I think it's because of the nature of the list. The idea of that is respect. Like I say, Spirit Island is one of my favorite games, but I can totally understand people bouncing off it. So it's not like, oh, you you, you madman. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it kind of works on that. But the fact that our tastes are very different. I mean, just that picture alone there. I mean, I've sold Coliseum. I sold Kingsburg. Is that Castles of Burgundy? I don't it know is. That, that picture's one. very old. I need to update it because I've sold a lot of those games as well. <laughs> yeah, like I don't like Cas. I mean, like I say, you've got failed which automatically is like you know i don't like those ones and uh castles of making like i think i sold that one and kept suburbia but i mean but even then you've got a lot of those felds and those like more typical sort of light to mid beige euros or something which i don't tend to go for but it does make for two very different lists like the last one we did what was the what was the title of that one we did the games that aged well that was it, yeah. And again, like I say, you do seem to pick some pretty good topics. Um, but but that one there, that was twenty very different <laughs> different oh, games. Yeah. And if we did like a top ten together, like a top ten of a year or top ten of all time thing, I mean, well, to be fair, we'll find out yours eventually when you get that far. But um, you know, pretty much guarantee that if you go watch his top one hundred and then compare that to mine, well, yeah, Signory, yep, yeah. uh, that's the promo. Come on, um. <laughs> Ag, come on, show me a game. All right. It seems the various to what it wants to tell me. But I mean, yeah, Signory. I mean, that's already a very different game to what's going to appear on on my list. So you're probably, it'd be interesting to see that. You you watch both of our top 100s back to back or something. You could probably find that you end up with a 195 different games. Yeah, quite possibly. We do, have some, we do have some crossover at, at points. Um, so yeah, you, you have that odd anomaly every now and then like you know we both like Ark Nova I like, I like yeah. it quite a lot so I think you like it way more than I do but I still I still like it quite a lot um, which I wouldn't have so, expected no <laughs> yeah so but yeah it's been it's been good fun talking about these games and it's good to again get, get the good balance of the positive and, and the negative and we can be constructive with <laughs> negativity <laughs> I suppose nah, so. That's how it works in there. All right. Well, take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. So check out his channel. Check out the other stuff I've done, including that spirit ranking video. I know it's on there somewhere. So everyone else has mentioned it. Uh, but yeah, we'll catch you soon, guys. Bye bye. Take care. Bye, Enjoy everyone. your football or whatever it is you want to do tonight. That's not for me. But take care. See you soon.